21 Ohioans on the University of Michigan football squad. Now, there are not 21 of them here today, but on the entire squad, there are 21 Ohioans, and you know they like nothing better than to come back to their home state and beat in the Buckeyes' brains. At left guard for the Wolverines, number 65, Reggie McKenzie. He's 6'4", 225, a junior out of Highland Park, Michigan. At center, number 53, Guy Murdoch. He's 6'2", 209, a junior from Barrington, Illinois. At right guard, number 60, a great one, Tim Coyle. Six feet tall, 223, a sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois. And Coyle has been one of the cogs in why this Michigan offense has been able to go. They say he's a great guard. Equally great is a right tackle who's been mentioned on several All-American teams, even though it's a bit early for this. Dan Deerdorf. He's 6'3", 241, a senior. He's from Canton, Ohio. At the other end spot will be number 85, Paul Seymour. You've heard of his cousin, who was a great end at Notre Dame. Here, this Seymour comes out of Berkeley, Michigan. He's 6'5", 239, and he's a junior. At quarterback, perhaps the most underrated quarterback in the United States right now, Don Moorhead. He's a senior. He's 6'3", 200 pounds, comes out of South Haven, Michigan. In the tailback position, a young fellow beset by injuries last year, played sporadically. He came into his own this year. He's only a about 65 or 100 yards, something of this sort, from breaking all sorts of great records at the University of Michigan, including Tom Harmons and Ron Johnson, and they were great ones. That's Billy Taylor. He's 5'11", 202. He's a junior out of Barberton, Ohio. With the exception of Moorhead, the quarterback, the rest of the backfield is juniors. Okay, at the wing back, number 22, Glenn Doughty. This is a young fellow. They didn't know where to play him this year. Finally, they settled on wing back, and after they put Dowdy at the wing back spot, the Michigan ball club started to gel. You remember they were very, very slow in starting. They've won all their ball games, true. But they beat Texas A&M as an example, 14 to 10. A week after Ohio State had annihilated Texas A&M, 56 to 13. But Dowdy is the man that's made this attack go from the wing back spot. He's also the back who comes out of the backfield to be on the receiving end of the passes out of the hand of Don Moorhead. He's a real threat, whether he's running for a pass or running with a football. He's a junior from Detroit. He's 6'1", 196. Glenn Doughty. At fullback, here's a young fellow that when they had Doughty at fullback and then they had Taylor at fullback and her Bo Schemblick was trying to fool around and see just who he would have in his backfield. He finally decided to go with Fritz Seifert. He's out of Darien, Connecticut. He's 6'3", 211, and he too is a junior. Let's take a look now at the Buckeyes. Michigan has won the toss, incidentally. They've elected to receive. Ohio State will be defending the south goal. That's the open end of the stadium. And the Buckeyes on defense will be going something like this. At left end will be number 83, Mark Debevic. He's 6'1", 220, a 21-year-old senior from Geneva. At left tackle, number 70, George Hazenall. He's 6'1", 252, a 19-year-old sophomore out of Garfield Heights. Middle guard, just about everybody's All-American. Number 68, Jim Stillwagon. He's out of Mount Vernon. He's 6 feet tall, 225, a 21-year-old senior. They tell me this guy has feats of strength that are almost unheard of for a man his size. At right tackle, number 79, a young kid that I know out of Portsmouth, Ohio, just a sophomore, Chad Williams. He's 6'3", 230, he's 19, and a sophomore, and he's destined to be a great one. At right end, number 87, a young fellow who really came into his own this year, Ken Lutner. And the Wolverines come on the field, and now the Buckeyes. Lutner is 6'2", 209, a 20-year-old junior from Medina. At linebacker, number 63, Doug Adams from Xenia. Six feet tall, 220, a 20-year-old senior. At the other linebacker, number 88, Stanley White. And this young fellow really came into his own this year, too. He's 6'1", 222, a 20-year-old junior from Kent. At cornerback, another All-American candidate, Jack Tatum. He's 6 feet tall, 204, a 21-year-old senior from Passaic, New Jersey. At left halfback, number 28, Harry Howard. He's 6'1", 192, a 20-year-old junior from Cincinnati. At the other halfback, number 26, Tim Anderson. Six feet tall, 200 pounds, 21-year-old senior from Colliers, West Virginia. And at safety man, Mike Sensabaugh. 
from Cincinnati. Six feet tall, 180 pounds. He's 21 and a senior. So there you have the lineups for today's ball game, and we'll have the kickoff in 70 seconds. This is 50,000 Watt WGAR Cleveland, a radio service of nationwide communication. Here's news about health insurance, and it should interest you because Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company of Columbus, Ohio, has a hospital and surgical plan that lets you choose the amount and kind of coverage. That's right. You choose the amount and kind of coverage. The official, Gene Calhoun, is the referee today. Frank Strokia is the umpire. Headlinesman is Johnny Olson. The field judge is Robert Dangenhart. And the back judge is Jay Anderson. And we're waiting for Gene Calhoun to give him the OK sign. Stanley White has it. Checks his alignment. And here we go with a kickoff for the game of all games. There's the boot, and he hit it pretty good. It's coming his way to Scheffler at the 12. He stumbles to the 15, to the 20, gets hit, gets away from the man to the 25. He stumbles, and Ohio State has it, I think. It is Ohio State football at the 25. And coming up is Howard with the fumble. Harry Howard comes up with the football, and Ohio State has a big break in the ball game, taking over the big skin at the Michigan 25-yard line. The referee has to stop Ohio State from uh, starting their first play until Michigan's team can get on the field and get lined up. And they get the sticks in. Okay. Clarinet quarterback has Masajowski way wide to the left side. He turns, he rolls, he hands the ball to Hayden. He gets hit hard at the 24 and driven back a couple of yards. Hit by Mike Taylor, number 33, initially. Gain of just a yard, second down and nine for the Buckeyes. Running at the Michigan 24-yard line. Dick Kuhn goes out. He's been replaced by Donovan at a guard. They split the backs, Hayden and Brockington. Jankowski way wide, left side. Here's Kern, dropping straight back to throw. Looking for a man open. Throws. Then Jankowski at the 14. He gets loose. He's the 5. He scores, but he might be blown back at the 13-yard line. It'll be a first down for Ohio State at the 13. He got hit by Darden, who's a monster man in the defensive uh, club for Michigan. He evidently got stopped after a pickup of 11 yards and a first down, the first of the ball game. Spun away from Darden and went down into score, but the official had blown the ball dead at the 13. First down, 10 yards to go. Buckeyes, close to the Michigan 13-yard line. Kern is asking for quiet. The ends are in tight. He fumbles the football and recovers it at the 16. Kern, a little trouble on the takeaway. In there, Creep was beat Newell to contain him at the 16-yard line. Well, we've had a big break in the ball game, and there are a great many fans who thought that the, uh, the break in the ball game might be a deciding factor. So Ohio State has that break, the first one. And we'll see if they can capitalize on it. Jankowski comes back in. He's split wide to the left side. Just two backs behind Kern. Hayden and Brockington. Kern going back to throw. Looking for... He's going to run. He's at the 20. He's at the 15. Head down to the 13, which is the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down, 10 yards to go. Hit down by Keller at the 13. There's a man in that defense there. Number 39, Henry Hill, the middle guard, who's a senior out of Detroit. He's 5'11", 217, number 39, and he's a great one. Teague coming into the lineup, replacing Campana, and they're going with actually three ends in the ball game and three backs, putting the ends up on the line of scrimmage. Now Campana's coming back in for the setback field, doesn't know what the play is as he'd come off. Take the one man, give the ball to uh, Hayden, and he gets to the 10. That'll bring up a fourth and about six and a half or seven yards to go, and Peach, or Fred Stram comes in. He'll be attempting a field goal. That stop was made by Marty Huff just shy of the 10-yard line. So Michigan able to contain Ohio State here after uh, the Bucks recovered the fumble at the 25, and it'll be a kick of 28 yards with Camp Anna holding and Schramm kicking. Calhoun, the referee right behind us, the spot, the kick looks good, and it is good. It's a timeout, and it's Ohio State 3, Michigan nothing. Got too much insurance? It's possible. Many people do. 
but now you can find out free with no strings. A nationwide insurance confidential analysis will give you the facts straight. Doesn't cost a cent, could save you a bundle. Confidential analysis from Nationwide. Call your local agent. He's listed in the yellow pages. Well, Bob, a lot of the critics before this ball game said the first uh, team on the scoreboard uh, has to have a uh, fine advantage. We'll see. Well, as I said before, a lot of people felt that uh, the breaks would be uh, play a very, very important factor in a ball game. Let's call a deep man. Now, Preston Henry's back in there uh, in a receiving position, along with Rather. And across the way is Doughty. They're the three deep men standing uh, all from the 10-yard uh, line back to the goal line. As Ohio State with a 3 to nothing lead, recovered a Michigan fumble on the kickoff at the 25, got down to the 10, we were stopped there, and Schramm came in to give the Buckeyes their 3 to nothing lead. Stanley White will be kicking off, and uh, one thing we're going to be very, very sure of today, we're going to get enough time for the timeouts. Thanks to the telly. <laughs> okay, we're all set to go. There's Weiss kick. He got a pretty good foot in line drive. Dowdy fumbles it at the 12. He gets it at the 15. Comes to the 20. A big hole. 25, 30 to the 31 and 32 yard line. Hit by Camp Hanna. No, make that Lampka. Make that Lampka around the 31 yard line. Pick up of 20 on the kickoff after he got it down around the 11-yard line following his bobble. It was a hard line drive type kick off the right foot of Stanley White. So here's the first play of the afternoon offensively for the University of Michigan. They have Seifert in front of Taylor. It's a power eye to the right side. They turn, they give it to Taylor. Try, he slips and falls at the line of scrimmage. Bill Wagon got a hand on his, on his knee and brought him to the ground right at the 31-yard line. Big Jim Stillwagon. He was picked on the uh, football news out of Detroit, Roger Stanton's newspaper up there, as the All-American middle guard defensively. And he is great. Balance line in the tee. Send Dowdy way wide to the left side where he's got coverage from Howard. Moorhead going back to throw. Looks for a man open. And a little swing pass to Taylor. And it's over his head. He was in the open at the 30. Adams went out to cover him, but the pass was overthrown to Taylor. Shad putting a little pressure, Shad Williams that is, on Moorhead, making him throw it. It'll be third down, almost 10 yards to go. Substitution coming in for Michigan. Paul Staroba comes back in, replacing number 80, Bill Harris. Big play here for the Wolverines. Moorhead going back to pass, sets up. Looks for the man open, throws, and he gets away to 40, the 45 and 47 yard line. Up down is Taylor on a completed pass out. They came back with the same play, Earl. Yes, they did, Bob. Identical. Picked up the first down, a pickup of about 17 yards, and a first down for Michigan at their own 47 yard line. And there was a one-on-one -on -one tackle possible against Taylor back there, Bob, but he's tough to stop oh, with just one man. No question about that. And Moorhead had protection. This time he rolls out. Gives the ball to Taylor on a comeback. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage. He kind of slipped and fell, but he was contained a little bit by Lutner and Holloway. Right at the line of scrimmage. Second down, 10 yards to go for Michigan. Running at their own 47. It's Ohio State 3 and Michigan nothing. Bucks got to the 10. Were held and settled to 3. Seifert and Taylor, setbacks behind Moorhead, and he's rolling out to the right side. Has a little pressure, throws back, and uh, Doughty got it and is brought down at the 43-yard line, and actually I think Anderson tackled him before he had his hands on the football. Doughty coming out of the backfield, split wide to the left side in that particular time, and it'll be a first down for Michigan at the Ohio State 43-yard line, or thereabouts. I do think that Anderson was tackling him before he had the football, Earl. Yes, Bob, I'm sure he, he had him pretty well wrapped up, but it was a high pass, and uh, fortunately uh, for Michigan, uh, the receiver's hands were high where the ball was. Well, this is one thing we don't know, having seen Michigan for the first time, but 
it seems like they're throwing their their patterns are down and out to the left at least the three passes that have been thrown have been down and out to the left towards the left sideline not right at the sideline but close to it it is a first down for michigan the second of the ball game for them and they have it first and ten at the ohio state 43. Lining up for the first time with the ends in tight. That power eye to the right side. Moorhead working on the long count. Turns, gives the ball to Taylor. Taylor vaults to the 40 and still goes down to the 37-yard line. Looked like he didn't have much of a hole to hit into when he vaulted over a lineman. And finally was wrapped up by Anderson at the 37-yard line. That's a gain of about six. It'll be second down, four yards to go for Michigan. Remember, they have a bruising... They picked up 33 first downs last week against Iowa. Can you imagine that? 33 first downs. Great ball control club. Moorhead now with second and four. But gives the ball to Cypress. He gets hit at the 40 and Robert back to the 41 and 42. They were rushing all sorts of men that time. Ohio State had a real big rush on. Lutner grabbed him along with Mark Zabevic, who turned the play in, and they had that one pretty well figured out. They lose it back about to the 41-yard line is where they've spotted it, so it's third down and about eight yards to go. One man out to the right. That's Paul Staroba. Moorhead back to throw. Looks for the man open out here. Gives it to Taylor. Taylor to the 40. Taylor to the 36, and he's down there. He did not make the first down. Brought down by Stanley White and Adams. So it brings up a fourth down. I'm sure it'll rule out all uh, possibility of a field goal because it would have to be about a 55 or 60 yard kick. 55 yard kick or something of that sort. So I'm sure they're going to rule that one out. And they're going to send in Staroba, their punter. He's a good one. He leads the Big Ten with a 41 and a half yard average. Sends the balls back at the 10. A good snap. He gets a high, booming spiral away. Sends the ball's letting it go over his head. It bounds down on the one-yard line. And it was down on the one-yard line on a good defensive play going down the field. Number 71, Jack Harpering, a tackle. Down the ball. In fact, it's close to the one-foot line. So the Buckeyes really have their work cut out for them now as Michigan has them in a hole. It's three to nothing. Ohio State... The Buckeyes having the ball at about their own one-foot line. Bob, that looked like one of those chip shots you see uh, by good golfers uh, that hit that ground and dug right in. Well, you never see me making a shot like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I saw a cute cartoon the other day. It says, in this grave lies an honest man and a, go and a golfer. And the guy <laughs> says, I didn't know they buried two guys in one grave. <laughs> well, we have a timeout with a score. Ohio State 3, Michigan nothing. Bob, you know, uh, we may as well point out right here a statistic uh, that this is the first time uh, since 1905, and this would uh, give us further idea of the monumental proportions of this battle. First time since 1905 that two undefeated football teams uh, have battled for the championship of the Big Ten. That's 65 years away, we figure. And going back there to 1905, that was Michigan under Fielding Yost, who had a 12-0 record that year. Chicago under Amos Alonzo Stagg, who'd won nine straight. They met in Chicago, and Chicago won the football game two to nothing. And the, the big thing, the only points, uh, those were the only points scored against Michigan all year. Yeah, and uh, Dick Benjamin was a statistician in that ball game. <laughs> Kern now, standing in his own end zone. Turns gives the ball to Brockington, coming up the middle, and there's a penalty marker goes down as he gets out to about the one-yard line. Clogging up the middle was Pete Newell. There might have been a nil, little illegal motion on the part of the Buckeyes. They can't penalize them too, too much farther back than where they are right now. Offside. No, it's against Michigan. Oh, offside. Both, both teams offside. So they'll do it all over again. It's first down and 10, yard to go, 10 yards to go. And the Buckeyes are about their own two-foot line, something of that sort. Okay, Buckeyes out now with the ends in tight. Full house backfield, running against the six-man Michigan defense. Turn, turns. 
hands the ball to Brockington. He hits out to the five, maybe to the six yard line. As he started left, cut back over the middle. Finally racked up by Huff. And Huff wears the same number as his counterpart, that's Marty Huff, as Sam Huff wore, number 70. It'll be second down for the Buckeyes and about uh, five, close to five yards to go. Michigan in a six-man line in that particular one, anchored by Henry Hill, their All-American candidate for middle guard. Hill's a senior out of Detroit. And the Buckeyes are going to ask for time for the moment. I don't know whether it's because of an injury or... Uh, Gary Lego has gone into the ball game. Now he's the punter. I don't. Uh, I wouldn't imagine that Ohio State would go for a punt on a on a second down situation. But uh, we've seen stranger things than that happen, haven't we, Earl? Bob, we sure have. We saw a couple strange ones last week at West Lafayette. I thought. Well, I don't know about second guessing. I mentioned it right from the gun rather than wait till after it was over. But I was real glad that Purdue did not go for three when they got down there close last week. Uh, it appeared, for all intents and purposes, that the kick would only be about four yards longer than an extra point, and the ball was in excellent field position. Well, I was happy too, Bob, when they punted from their uh, from but, Ohio State's 32-yard line yeah. on fourth and seven. Well, we can take all kind of breaks like that anybody wants to give us. We're very, very receptive. We think it's better to, to give than to receive. That's our spirit for Christmas, too. Okay, here we go. Second down, about five. Get the ball to Brockington. He hit us out to about the ten. He got hit by Huff and Mike Taylor. Close to the ten. Nine-yard line, they spotted it. It'll be third down a couple. Strickland going in, offensively, Ohio State. Phil Strickland, replacing Charlie Bonica. Big play for the Buckeyes here, running at their own nine-yard line. They lead, three to nothing. And we have uh, about 7.40 remaining in the third quarter, first quarter. There's a turn to give it to Brockington. He busts out, looks like he has it. They give him the forward progress, I think he'll have it. He was running behind a block by Donovan. And Merv Teague, and it is the first down Ohio State. Close to the 12-yard line. A few new wrinkles in there, Earl. They're uh, running at times without a right halfback. Using an extra end in there, Merv Teague, who has too much action this season. He's a sophomore out of Youngstown, 6'5", 210. And they're using two setbacks behind Kern, and everybody else is up in the line. And that's what it is now. As Kern is rolling out, gives the ball to Hayden, 15, 20, 21. And he was stopped by Huff. He might have gone for considerable yardage, but Huff tore him down at the 21-yard line. It's second down, about a yard to go for the Buckeyes. Just across their own 20, leading 3 to nothing. A little less than seven minutes remaining to be played in the first quarter. All sorts of records being set here today, attendance-wise and for signs and for words and everything else. Here's Kern with the full house backfield. Gives the ball to Brockington. Cuts back. He gets to the 24 for the first down. Mike Taylor stopping him just at the 24. Taylor has 65 tackles on the season as Ohio State comes up with its third first down of the afternoon. And Taylor is being replaced. Looks like... Uh, Easton, who's gone in there to replace him. Buckeyes first and ten, close to their own 25-yard line. Karen with a flanker, way wide to the right side, rolls to the right, hands it off to Hayden, a hole, he's the 30, spins away to the 31-yard line. A real hard tackle by Betts at the 31-yard line. But he picked up about six, second down and four. And the Buckeyes offense is a little different. They're not going straight ahead. They're starting straight and then veering a little bit. Second down, four yards to go. The Buckeyes just across their own 30-yard line. They're leading, three to nothing. First quarter, about five and a half minutes left to play in the quarter. Kern gives to Brockington, straight ahead. That's a head knocker up to about the 32, maybe the 33. Huff and Taylor combining to bring down some sometimes like uh, Darden, Taylor, and Huff are the only defensive ball players on this club, but they are great ones. And I know we've kind of overplayed the word great this afternoon. It's third down and a couple for the Bucks. 
They have to get the ball to about the 35-yard line. Full house backfield with the engine tight going against the five-man line with three linebackers. Give the ball to Brockington. He gets the first down a little more after the 40. And is he running like a man can say? <laughs> it was Elliott. Along with Taylor, Mike Taylor, who stopped him up at the 40-yard line. And another first down, the fourth for the Buckeyes this afternoon. And it could be that we're going to go back to that three yards and a cloud of dust. An attack that's made Woody Hayes one of the greatest winning coaches in the country. Jankowski way wide left side. Ball out. Nope. They give the ball off to Hayden. He gets to the 40 and maybe the 41. Just not too many places for him to go. Held up along the way by Seymour, who's a defensive end. Phil Seymour. And gained just, let's say, a yard, yard and a half. Second down, nine yards to go. Two or three substitutions coming in for Ohio State. Teague goes out as they get another back in there. So we've seen a few new wrinkles. Buckeyes going into their 6-2 defense now with cornerbacks wide. Curran back to throw to throw quickly. Jake can't fan at midfield. He goes out of bounds at the 48-yard line. It's the first down for the Buckeyes. Tom Campana, who's replaced Larry Zelina, and Shoemaker drove him out of bounds at the 48-yard line. The fifth first down of the afternoon for the Buckeyes. And Bob, that was a pretty fair forward pass by Rex Kern. Well, Mr. Hayes said that Kern has had a little bit of tightness in his arm the last uh, four or five Saturdays, and we hope that it's uh, loosened up. If that's an indication, it probably is. There's a timeout with a score. Ohio State three, Michigan nothing. Ten at the Michigan 48-yard line. Kern with Brockington and Hayden as a setback, so we have a little bit of premature action in the line. One of the Michigan defensive men jumped across the neutral zone. I don't know whether he got back or not. It, he did not. He did, and it's against Ohio State. It caused one of the Ohio State linemen to move. That's a real tough thing to do. Woody's mad at the uh, official on this side of the field in front of the Ohio State bench. It's awfully tough for an offensive lineman to restrain himself when a man is coming at him. If you get across that neutral zone and then go back before the snap of the ball, it's not an encroachment. But it did cause the offensive guard to move a little bit, and there's that penalty that sometimes seems to plague the Buckeyes. It's first and 15. They have the ball at their own 47 now. Garn gives off to Hayden. Hayden comes left side, picks up at most about a yard. Waiting for him was the defensive right side of the line led by Henry Hill and Keller and Huff. Pete Newell also in the vicinity. Second down, about 14 to go. The Buckeyes running at their own 48. They lead three to nothing. We have 345 remaining to be played in the first quarter. Buckeyes in tight. Kern dropping straight back to pass. Looks for the man open, hit to Campana, incomplete and almost intercepted. If that pass had been thrown higher, it would have been intercepted by Jim Betts. So it's third down, 14 yards to go. And coming back in defensively for Michigan is Mike Taylor. Their linebacker, he's a good one. Merv Teague checks back in for Ohio State. And he's replacing Tom Campana. At the 48-yard line. It's third down, 14 yards to go. Kern rolling to the right side. Gives the ball off to Hayden. He comes to the 50 and gets hit hard. And dropped at the 47-yard line by Gussich. Frank Gussich from Garfield Heights, Ohio. Dumping Leo Hayden. A couple of Ohioans. Bumping heads, and it'll force a punting situation for the Buckeyes, the first punt of the afternoon. And it's Elliott, Bruce Elliott, going back in one of the safety positions, along with uh, Tom Darden. There's a snap, and Kern came in to do some blocking. Oh, the leg goes kick high, not particularly deep. Downfield, fair catch called for by Elliott at the 22, 23-yard line. Ohio State with a little bit of a mix-up, didn't have enough men, and Kern went in to block and did throw a pretty good block. 
Evidently, it might have unnerved Lego a little bit, and they're spotting the ball at the Michigan 24, where the Wolverines will take over there, and they're trailing three to nothing. A little less than three minutes remaining in the opening quarter, and now you hear the Michigan fans with something to chat about. Got to wait for one of the officials that had come over to the Ohio State bench. Okay, we're all set to go. Seifert and Taylor are the setbacks behind Moorhead. Moorhead gives the ball to Taylor. Hits to the line. No place for him to go. All bunch of red shirts there, led by Stillwagon, Stan White. Dropping him right at the 25. A gain of just one. Second down nine. Great afternoon. Sunshiny, kind of chilly. But uh, this is the kind of a game thus far that's been warm warming the cockles of Ohio State fans' hearts. There's a turn. Moorhead keeps it. He tries to go right. He's going to get hit. And he gets dropped by Lutner. Back of the line of scrimmage at the 24-yard line. Ken Lutner, a good defensive job. As they faked off to Taylor. Taylor's the workhorse of this ball club. He'll do about 50% of the ball carrying. Seiferth is used for blocking, but on occasion he'll hand the ball to him. He's a setback just in front of Taylor. Third down, about 10 yards to go for the Buckeyes. You can hear the fans, they want that ball. Taylor, that fakes the hand up. He's gonna throw deep, goes this way too long. Intended for Doughty, he was covered by Sensabaugh. Pass was thrown out of bounds in front of the Ohio State bench at the 38. Bob, to give you an idea of what the Ohio State is contending with in Moorhead, last week against uh, Iowa, he increased his career total offense to 3,528 yards, thus breaking the Wolverine record set by All-America Bob Chappius in the early 1940s. Don Moorhead. Staroba in the kick. He'll get the kick away from about his own 16. Gets a good snap. Big rush put on. He booms one way out of there. Anderson going back gets it at the 29. He has a whole bunch of uh, yellow jerseys and he gets it across the 35 to 36. Yellow pants and white jerseys, really. And the Buckeyes take over. First and 10, close to their own 37-yard line as Bill Taylor made the tackle on Tim Anderson. Kern, last one to go on the field. You know, there are... Eight seniors on this offensive ball club for Woody Hayes and five seniors on their defensive ball club while Michigan has six seniors offensively and four defensively. Going against the five-man line with two linebackers and a monster man off to the side. Gern rolling to the left side. Hands the ball off to uh, Hayden. He gets at most about a yard. Hit with a shoestring tackle by Henry Hill. And number 91, Phil Seymour. Second down nine for the Buckeyes running just across their 37-yard line. Tom Campana goes in replacing Teague. Teague is an end, and uh, Ohio State has been using three ends, actually putting Jankowski back into the backfield and as a split way wide to the left side. And that's where they have him now. And Kern dropping straight back to throw. Looks for a man open up. Intercepted by Betts at the 40, 35. He's to the 25, down to the 20, and down to the 17-yard line. And did he ever lay back and set that one up? Jim Betts. It was intended for Campana. You remember before when we said Campana was open? Betts cut in front of him, but the pass was low. This time he cut right in front of Campana, intercepted, and ran up from the 40 down to the Ohio State 18, and Michigan's reel back in this ballgame. Ohio State's leading 3 to nothing. We have just a little bit better than a minute left to play here in the opening quarter. Okay, let's see. Moorhead now with Cypher, then Taylor is the setbacks. Doughty is the wing back to the right side. Give it to Taylor. Hold to the 15, and he gets dropped down just inside the 15-yard line. White, Tatum, stopping him, along with Adams at the 15. Gain of three, second down, seven yards to go, and the Buckeye defense has its work cut out for them right here and now. We'll have a station break as soon as we can here along the way. Moorhead running to the left side, gets hit and dropped at the 14-yard line. A gain of just a yard. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Nationwide Insurance Football Network. 
This is 50,000 Watt WGAR Cleveland, a radio service of nationwide communications. Did you know that you can get a life insurance policy for your children that increases to five times its original value, yet the low premium never changes? Nationwide Life Insurance Company of Columbus, Ohio offers this new policy. It's called the Juvenile Estate Builder Plan, and here's how it works. You take out a nationwide juvenile estate builder policy, say for $1,000 on your child, any time before his 15th birthday. On the day he turns 15, face value of the policy jumps to $2,500. Yet the low premium stays the same. On his 21st birthday, face value jumps to $5,000. Still, the low premium stays the same. Cash and loan values of the policy can come in handy for college, starting a business, getting married. For details about Nationwide Juvenile Estate Builder Policy, insurance for your children that increases to five times the original value while the low premium stays the same, call your local Nationwide agent. He's listed in the yellow pages. Oh, Bob, every time I see Moorhead on that keeper, I have to remember and perish the thought that last year at Ann Arbor, uh, when he was so devastating with that, of course, we saw Rex Kern do that uh, primarily as a, as a sophomore, but this Moorhead, as we just pointed out, is one tough quarterback, and you mentioned before the ball game, he's probably one of the most underrated in the country. And uh, when we notice the fact that he's already broken Bob Chappius's record, uh, which goes way back to the 1940s, uh, quite an All-American, it gives you an idea of what a tough uh, quarterback Ohio State is facing today. And not only that, Earl, but he has the size that everybody likes to have in a quarterback. He's almost 6'4", and he weighs 200 pounds, perhaps a pound or two more than that. And uh, this is a, a great attribute for a quarterback. He's strong, he's tall enough to look downfield and pick out his receivers. He's a real good one. So we have a couple of crucial plays coming up here. Ball, incidentally, uh, is right between the hash marks. Good uh, field position for a field goal in the event that they would hold them here. So there's a turn, and going to the right side is Moorhead. He looks in the end zone, and look out, it's incomplete. Intended down there for Seymour, but broken up in the end zone by Anderson. And Mr. Seymour had a step or two on Anderson, and he had to come up with a Herculean leap in order to fall away from Seymour, and six. There is the end of the quarter, and the score is Ohio State three, Michigan nothing. 31 yards. Moorhead's holding for him. There's the snap, the spot, the kick, it looks good. It is good, and we have a tied up ball game. Michigan three and Ohio State three. Earl? Well, Bob, you know, we mentioned national championship, uh, and since uh, both these teams are involved today, we can talk about it. If Ohio State wins today, and again in the Rose Bowl, for instance, the Buckeyes could still very easily wind up number one. Strengthening that possibility are the facts that Texas still has to play Arkansas. Notre Dame still must play Louisiana State and Southern California. And Nebraska still has Oklahoma to contend with. Neither, even after those games, Texas, Notre Dame, and Nebraska most probably will be in postseason bowl games. And the number one ranking is not handed out until the bowl games are played. That's both Ohio State and Michigan, now four and five, depending on which way you look at it, are still very much in the number one picture which adds to the dimensions of this football game. That's what we're trying to say. Well, both ball clubs have taken advantage of a break to gain three points. Ohio State recovering a Michigan fumble on the kickoff at the 25-yard line. And here's Dana Coyne kicking it off now. A hard-driving kick, Campana and Brockington. Brockington at the five. He comes to the 10, the 15, the 20, 23, 24-yard line. Maybe that's as far as he can get. Hit initially along the way by Preston Henry, who was quickly downfield, and finally uh, Frank Gusich, and then was finally secured at just across his own 23-yard line. And Michigan intercepting a Rex Kern pass and a return of about, uh, oh, almost 20 yards, setting up their field goal. Kern with Hayden and Brockington as a setback. Jankowski way wide right side. Kern rolling to the right, pitches back to Hayden, turns the corner, comes to the 25, to the 26. Ridden to the ground, there at the 26-yard line by, a, by Betts, who intercepted the pass, and number 33, Mike Taylor. It was a better than fair country uh, linebacker. Ryan Donovan goes into the ball game for Ohio State. He's replacing Dick Kuhn. A 
gain of, uh, I'll say about three yards, second down and seven. Current makes, hands the ball off to Hayden, and Hayden drives out to the 30. That's a gain of close to four for Leo. Make it third down now, and uh, close to four yards to go. Three and a half yards, probably better. Mike Taylor again on the stop. Taylor being replaced on a third down situation when there is that possibility of a pass, and Ed Moore, a linebacker, goes in to replace him. Current looks out to the left side where he has Jankowski split about 15 yards left side. Third and four. Kern dropping straight back to throw. Looks for the man open up the middle to uh, Brockington at the 31. He did not get downfield enough to pick up the first down. And the linebacker who had gone into the ball game, Ed Moore, made the stop on him and it'll bring up a fourth down and three situation for Ohio State right close to their own 31. Gary Lego has gone into the ball game. Darden going back along with Elliott. For Michigan, they're standing about their own 35. De Leon snaps Goodwin. Lego with a rush put on him, and he gets a high spiral, not particularly far downfield. Takes an Ohio State bounce to the 45, goes down around the 40, uh, close to the 39, and it'll be blown dead there. A big rush put on by the outside man for Michigan, forcing Lego's kick to be high. Fortunately for Ohio State, it took a bounce in their favor. It's a boot of only 30 yards and no return. So Michigan with pretty good field position at their own 39-yard line in this tied up ball game, 3-3. Three, three. Buckeyes scoring with 12-18 remaining in the first quarter, and the Wolverines coming back to score in the first play of the second quarter with field goals. And we have a timeout, and the score is Ohio State 3 and Michigan 3. Well, when you're sidelined because of illness or accident, drink soup, stay warm, and get cash from Nationwide Insurance. We'll give you up to $1,200 a month depending on your income until you're back on the job. We'll give you cash to pay for those little things that keep your spirits up like rent and groceries. Payday protection from Nationwide. Call your local Nationwide agent. He's listed in the yellow pages. Earl, did you ever have a feeling you were sitting on a keg of dynamite? Bob, I certainly <laughs> have. I said before the game, this is the biggest, hottest pressure cooker in the whole wide world today. And almost 88,000 fans are going to watch it. Michigan broke the huddle, but the official said the timeout wasn't over. It just to me kind of feels like we're waiting for the inevitable to happen. We don't know when it's going to happen or to whom it's going to happen, but it is going to happen. Buckeyes running with that uh, five-man line. Morehead turns, gives the ball to Taylor, a bit of a hole across the 40 to the 41 or 42. He cut back, wrapped up finally by uh, Stan White, Jack Tatum, and Shad Williams. Spotting the ball close to the 42. Gain of about three yards. And it's second down and seven. As uh, Harris checks in at an offensive end for Michigan. He goes wide to the right side. Roba is the tight end, or Seymour. Moorhead's back to throw. Looks for the man up and throws, and it's in and out of the hands of Harris at midfield. Anderson giving coverage on him, but that Harris can kind of fly. He's got what they call quick feet. And he gives you a lot of head and shoulders and keeps those uh, big dogs moving around on the turf. And that drives the secondary man absolutely crazy. Harris goes out, Paul Staroba comes back in. Stroba has 29 catches on the season. He's the leading pass catcher for Michigan. Gowdy is the man that goes wide to the right. Stroba left, back to throw. Moorhead up the middle. Stroba has with the 48. And he's been dropped right there by Howard at the 49-yard line. It's a first down for Michigan in Ohio State territory at the 49. That's their third of the afternoon. And for Stroba, make that catch. I think that's his 30th or 31st catch of the year. Jerry Shoemaker. Checks in, replacing Doughty. So, Schembechler has three ends in the ball game now. And it could be that they might start to throw a little more. Now they try to get the ball to Taylor. A bit of a hole. He gets racked up at the 48. Just a gain of a yard. Shad ended up on top of him, but I think there are a couple of red jerseys there uh, who probably gave more of a hand to him than anybody else, but we couldn't pick up who they were. 
Ball right out there in the big scarlet and gray O. Halfway between the hash marks. Harris comes back in. Doughty comes back in. A lot of substitutions on it almost each and every play for both ball clubs. It's second down, nine yards to go at the Ohio State 48, all tied up three and three. Moorhead takes a handoff, rolls to the right side, cocks his arm to throw, penalty marker goes down. Pass was incomplete, and I couldn't see what the penalty was for because there wasn't an offensive man anywhere near where the penalty marker went down. It's against Michigan, evidently. Somebody might have pushed off. But it'll be a 15-yarder if it is offensive pass interference. Dean Calhoun, the referee, having a little bit of a discussion. Give the ball to Calhoun. And he walks off 15. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be third down. Since that is a loss of down penalty. Third down and a lot of yards. 24 of them about. Official signaling to both benches that it is a loss of down penalty. And Mr. Moorhead's going to try and loosen them up a little bit. They have two flankers to the right side. And Taylor goes out and sets a little bit wide to the right side. Moorhead goes back to set up and throw under a little bit of pressure. He's going to throw deep up the middle. Look out. It's caught by Staroba at the 43 or 44 yard line and he's down immediately by Adams and Howard. Didn't pick up nearly enough yardage for the first down. As a matter of fact, it's going to be fourth down in about 16 or 17. And that'll force a punting situation for Michigan. It's all tied up three and three. A fumble recovery led to the Three points for Ohio State, an intercepted pass led to the three points for Michigan. Starova gets a kick away from about his own 35. Good snap, and he hangs one real high. Anderson back around the 14-yard line. Tries to go up the middle, gets to the 20 to the 23, 24-yard line. Hit initially along the way by Tom Coyle. And secured at the 24, and now the Buckeyes have the football in this tied-up game of three and three. And the Buckeyes have not moved the football the last couple of times they had it. They drove from their own one-foot line out to about midfield, had the pass intercepted. And that set up the Michigan field goal. Michigan does not go into, into its defensive line. They kind of huddle and then come out of it and they're in a 5-2. Kern takes a hand off, gives the ball now off to Hagen, comes out across to the Rockington, close to the 30-yard line. About the 29 and a half. Gain of a little better than five. Let's say second down and close to five. Second down, close to five yards to go. Buckeyes across their own 29. It's all tied up three apiece. Jankowski comes way wide right side. Karen looks up and down. He's going against the six-man line. Gets the ball off to Hayden. Hayden with the 35, almost to the 36. It's the first down, Ohio State. Neck grab was made by Phil Seymour. And, of course, the Buckeye fans like that. For State, I think that's their sixth first down of the afternoon. Is that right, Dick? Yeah. Old coward Cosell over here, our eighth statistician. In fact, he has a, a cuter mug that says he's the world's greatest statistician. <laughs> Kern takes a handoff, gives the ball to Hayden. 40, 41, and drops it to the 41-yard line. Very good ball handling by Kern, Brockington, and Hayden, who brings it to his 41. A gain of six, we're at second down and four. Hill and Betts, a linebacker and a safety man, stopped Hayden at the 41. We have a little better than nine minutes left to play in the opening half. It's all tied up three and three. Kern, Jankowski wide to the left side. Brockington and Hayden gives the ball up to Brockington. Tries to come outside. Gets by one man at the 42. Gets hit down hard by, thrown down by Huff. And then he was secured by a couple of other men, including Ed Moore. But it was Huff who kind of got Brockington by the shoulder pads and threw him down at the 43. Second down, third down rather, and a couple of yards to go. 
That brings Mike Taylor back in as a linebacker on a third and short yardage situation. They get Ed Moore out of there and they put uh, Mike Taylor back in. Going against the 5-2 defense. Rockington gets it, but he does not get the first down. He gets close to the 45, but it's going to bring up a fourth down and about maybe uh, almost a yard. He got a real good shoe string tackle there from Mike Taylor, the man who went in. You hear the fans yelling to go for it. It's fourth down, and they have about two lengths of the football to go. And some of the Buckeye players out there on the field were pointing uh, to go for it, too, Bob. And I think, no, Lego's in there. They're going to punt. Bruce Elliott and Darden both going back. Lego get the kick away from his 35-yard line. Good snap. And he gets a high spiral. Fair catch call for by Elliott. Back around the 17 or 18-yard line. And the Buckeyes go on defense with the Wolverines having their hands on the football close to the 18-yard line. Well, those who yelled go on those fourth and, <laughs> and a yard situation. <laughs> I think they were egged on. And to show you the uh, spirit of this Ohio State team, Bob, they were egged on, too, by three or four of those players, mainly linemen, who were saying, let's get it, let's get it. Who was the coach up here at Arlington for a few years? Moorhead? Moorhead. Yeah, Mark Moorhead. He spoke at a banquet down in our area, and he said after he got out of coaching and got in the stands, he was sitting in the stands in a fourth and a yard situation in his own territory, he found himself going right with the fans. Go, go, go for it. <laughs> and when he was a coach, he would turn around and say, shut up. It depends on where your bread is buttered, I think, Bob. Well, we're having a little bit of a time out here while both ball clubs make their necessary adjustments. And we know that the uh, card section to our left here, they came up with a big maize and blue bow sign. So they just want to show that they, uh, they're they nice and uh, some friendly gestures to our neighbors from the north. You know, uh, Bob, to show you how far afield the interest in this game has spread, uh, Woody Hayes and the Buckeyes were the subject of the lead story on the front page of the Wall Street Journal yesterday. And the article pointed up Ohio State's great victory record under, under Hayes and... Uh, Describe Woody, moral purpose, cold logic, so forth. Well, we're all set to go. Moorhead, first and ten, running at his own 18-yard line. Pitches to Taylor. He tries to come wide. He's going to get hemmed in and drop as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Debevic turned the play in beautifully. And then he was secured by Lutner, White, and Williams. Or Stillwagon and Williams. They might have lost. Well, maybe they got back to the line of scrimmage. I think that's about it. Second down, ten yards to go. That was the first pitch that we had to uh, one of the halfbacks, either Taylor or Dowdy. Wide to the right, goes to Roba. Moorhead going back to throw. A little bit of pressure throws, and it's incomplete. Staroba hit down by Howard at the 26-yard line, and actually it was only a great tackle by Howard that jarred the ball out of the hands of Paul Staroba. He kind of stripped him of the football, didn't he? It'll be third down, 10 yards to go for the Wolverines. They have a little bit of a wind advantage here. Milan Vakansky checks in for Ohio State. He can't get into the ball game. Michigan ready to go on third and 10. There's a draw. Hand the ball to uh, Taylor. Taylor gets to the 24-yard line. That's as far as he gets. That was kind of a halfback draw. Tatum and Adams converge to bring him down close to the 25. And it'll bring up a punting situation for the University of Michigan in this tied-up ball game of 3-3. Three and three. 6.45 remaining to be played in the first half. And Bob, would you say so far this game is living up to advanced billing? Yes, <laughs> I, I think it does. Anderson back, single safety. Staroba should get the kick away from about his 16-yard line. Gets a good snap, about a seven-man rush. Who did he get the foot into that one? And boom, it's sending Howard way back. It's at the... Five-yard line. He's going to have to pick it up around the three. Comes out to the 10, 15, 17, and dropped at the 18. Man, did Staroba kick that football. He hit it at the 16-yard line and went all the way down to the three. Before it was picked up, the line of scrimmage was at 25, so that was a 72-yard kick from the foot of Paul Staroba, the leading punter in the Big Ten, and he gave every indication of why it was. Bob, I think you'd have to say if there's any clear-cut superiority between either of these two uh, football teams at this point, 
And we almost said this a while ago before that pun is strictly uh, Michigan punting up to now. Well, the, the sticks had been moved, but uh, we're going to have the sticks put back in place at the original line of scrimmage which was about the 17-yard line, and there's a penalty marker down here near the midfield stripe, and now we're going to have to might do it all over again. I was down there seeing where they were going to put the sticks if they could remember where they were. Evidently, they do. And just wipe off that 72-yard boot from Skoroba. There's going to be about a 12-and-a-half-yard walk-off against Michigan. And probably it might have been holding, or it might have been an offensive clipping, which you very seldom see. No, it's a personal foul. Grabbing of the face mask against Michigan, and that cost them dearly. Because they had the ball down there, uh, Ohio State had the football, but back at their 17-yard line. And now Michigan's going to have to kick it again, and Skoroba standing just a yard or two deep in the end zone. Anderson standing at midfield, and he's uh, might drop back a yard or two. Good snap. He hits this one pretty hard. Anderson gets it at the 45. He comes to the 50, running to the right side. He tries to go outside, and he gets hit and knocked out of bounds around the 46 or 47-yard line. And somebody from Michigan came up and took a cheap shot at him in front of the Ohio State bench. And we say that because I'm sure the man knew that he was, but they didn't drop the penalty marker. And I'm surprised that Mr. Hayes didn't jump up and down a thousand times. Ohio State first and ten at the Michigan 46. They gained 37 yards on that, uh, on that penalty with a difference in the punch. And Kern in there to lead the attack. Good field position for the Buckeyes. Give the ball out to Brockington, head down across the 45 to the 44. Gain of maybe two, possibly three yards. Wait till they untangle him and put the ball down. It's just across the 44, close to the 43. Second down, seven yards to go. Three to three is the score, 5-45. For many to be played in the front half of this very important ball game for both ball clubs. Wide to the left side is Jankowski. Hayden and Brockington are the split back, so a Michigan man goes offside. There's the pitch to Hayden. Tries to go outside, turn the corner. He gets hit down hard by Betts at the 45. Another penalty marker went down over there, across the way, and uh, we might have some offsetting penalties here. <coughs> offside against Michigan. That, that's one thing we're sure of. Now the official is talking with uh, Rex Kern. It could be that the official on the far side also threw that penalty marker for the same reason, the offside. Just a little bit of a late flag. It's a five-yard walk-off against Michigan. They've had three penalties, totaling 32 yards. And for the Buckeyes, it'll be second down. About two yards to go. Ball at the Michigan 39. 5-24 remaining to be played in a tied-up ball game here in the first half. Turn going straight back to pass. Cox is armed to throw. He looks. He's going to throw deep for Jankowski, and it's no good. Penalty marker down at the 35. He unloaded on that one and threw it about uh, 50 yards or close to 50 yards. And there might be a penalty here against Ohio State. They're retreating. It was illegal motion, I believe, Bob, on Ohio State. It might be uh, holding, too. <laughs> I don't like to laugh when I say that, but uh, it's only about four or five yards downfield. And usually when you see that on a pass play, well, it's a five-yard walk-off. Illegal procedure against Ohio State. So they take it back to what was the original line of scrimmage after the first play in this series. It's all tied up, three and three. Second down now, back to seven yards to go for the Buckeyes at the Michigan 44-yard line. They actually lost about a half a yard on the five, two five-yard penalties. Five forward, five back. Oh, a little bit of motion in the Ohio State line. Teague jumped the gun. Again, one of the Michigan men and got through that neutral zone without hitting anybody and got back, but Teague was drawn into motion, you might say by the movement of the Michigan defensive man. 
So it's second down and 12 yards to go for the Buckeyes at the uh, 49-yard line. Campana couldn't get into the ball game. Karen looking up and down on a second and 12 situation. Rolls to the left, hands it to Hayden. Tries to go outside. He's to the 40-yard line. As he got a tremendous block along the way from Hicks and was dropped at the 40. So he picked up about seven or eight, and it'll be third down now and close to four yards to go for the Buckeyes at the Michigan 40. Up and Betts stopped him at the 40. Campana checks in. They're facing Jankowski. So what are you going to do here on third down and about three and a half, four yards to go? Karen with a full house backfield and the ends in tight. Asking for a little quiet, and he gets it. Takes the handoff, gives the ball out to Brockington. He forges ahead, close to the 37, maybe the 36. If he got to the 36, they have the first down. The official's going to ask for the chains to be brought in. And one of the other officials is very zealously guarding that football to make sure it doesn't move. And the players crowd around, and we can't see. I think it is. It is. First down, Ohio State. About the 36 and a half yard line. In Michigan territory. It's all tied up three and three. And we have 4.33 remaining to be played before perhaps the largest crowd in the history of this big stadium. Kern has a full house backfield with the ends in tight on a first and ten situation. Rockington hits the left side to the 32. Started on a slide and then cut back in. Beckman finally wrapped him up at the 32. Along with Hill and Huff. Second down. Five, five and a half yards to go for the Buckeyes. 3.55 left to play in the front half. Same formation. And it's Brockington again to the 30. Down to going a little bit rough there. Not much of a hole developed. Beckman, Huff, a couple of other white jerseys coming up. Along with Phil Seymour, number 91. Third down, three, three and a half yards to go for the Buckeyes. Very, very crucial series here for Ohio State. They send Jankowski way wide to the right side where he's being picked up by Elliott. Kern. Gives to Brockington. He only got about a yard, maybe a yard and a half off the left side of the line, down around the 28-yard line. I don't know whether they're going to send Schramm in or not. It'll be a 45-yard kick if he sends him in, so evidently he's not sending him in. He's sending in Campana on a fourth down and couple situation. Fourth and a couple, and this could be, well, it is, the play of the season for the Buckeyes right here on a fourth and a couple. Michigan digging in with three linebackers, a five-man line, and Kern with a full house backfield. Kern keeps it himself, takes the pitch out, and he digs down to the 26-yard line. It's a first down, Ohio State. Henry Hill came breaking through the line and finally made the tackle, but actually, Mike Taylor had that time perfectly from the linebacker spot and he was crashing and had not turned step one step to the right he would have met Mr. Mike Taylor in a real confrontation first and ten at the 25 yard line or close to it full house backfield with the ends in tight turn with the first and ten situation gets it to Brockington hardly any gain at all as he tried the right side and got hit right around the line of scrimmage Newell Gusich Stopping him right there at the 25. Let's say a gain of close to a half a yard, but make it second down at 10 yards to go. Rather than dealing in halves. 155 and the clock is moving. It's all tied up at three and three. <clears throat> Jankowski goes way wide left side. Gets double coverage over there. Karen rolls to the left side. Pitches out to Hayden. Hayden tries to come in. He's going to lose a yard or two. As Michigan has that one defensed real good. Seymour and Mike Taylor stopping Hayden, actually causing him to lose a yard, yard and a half. Close to the 26-yard line. And there's a timeout. 
with a score. Ohio State 3 and Michigan 3. Let your kids get the jump on life insurance on nationwide insurance. We call it jumping junior life insurance. If put in force when your child is 14, it'll jump five times its original value when the child is 21. It grows faster than they do. Jumping Junior from Nationwide Insurance. Call your local agent. He's listed in the yellow pages. WGAR Cleveland. Well, Bob 3-3 three, three on the scoreboard. One minute and 23 seconds left. Third down and 10 yards to go for Ohio State. And uh, you got to guess they're going to try one more, and then I would expect Fred Schramm to come in there if they don't break one for 10 yards or more. Well, let's see. We have to figure this out quickly. They have the ball at the 26. They usually spot it 33 yards deep. It'd have to be a 43-yard kick into the wind. And that's asking an awful lot. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Let's take let's take 10 seconds here and pause for station identification. This is the Nationwide Insurance Football Network. 1220 WGAR. Cleveland, Ohio. Ohio State has run 36 plays. Michigan has run 27 here in the front half. Here's a third down and about 10 and a half situation for Ohio State. One flanker out to the right side. Kern going back to throw. Looking up the middle, throws down to Jankowski. Touchdown! side went down about 10 yards cut over the middle he got a step or two on Elliott caught the ball on a beautifully thrown pass from Kern and walked in the last five so the Buckeyes go up nine to three Fred Strand's going to try to make it ten to three Campana holding for him good snap spot kick up good oh hold it hold it hold it hold it offside against Michigan the kick is good I think we're still having that uh, discussion down there in the field. And they're giving the option, I'm sure, saying, do you want to move it up and try for two, or are you going to take the uh, the one point? And they say they're not going to take it, and the kick is good. And the timeout with Ohio State 10 and Michigan 3. Bob, I don't know of anything that would set this Ohio State crowd uh, uh, screaming and yelling any more than a perfectly thrown pass from Rex Kern to Bruce Jankowski. They remember that play so well uh, from two years ago and, and a lot of splash of, of it last year as Ohio State went through the first eight games without any trouble. The, uh, the pass was perfectly thrown. There was a, a Michigan defender back there on Jankowski who had him beaten by about two or three yards. The pass from Kern was perfectly planted he just jogged into the end zone there's only a minute 18 seconds left at the half to halftime uh, a big play for Ohio State 10 to 3 for the Buckeyes in this game of the century and what a football game up to now okay all set to go it'll be Stanley White kicking off for the Buckeyes and back is rather he'll be the deep man we have Henry on the far side of the field and Dowdy on the near side they're not expecting a very deep kick and it could be that they're going to force it. Yes, they are. They're going to move it over now to almost the inbound hash marker in front of the Ohio State bench. Why they do this, I don't know, but I'm sure there's a, a definite reason for it. White will be kicking off. They have Sensible in there, too, as the uh, closer man, along with uh, Anderson, and I don't think they'll try an onside kick. I think they'll just try to kick it deep and try to contain Michigan. But here's Stanley White's boot, and it's a high, high, floater coming up fumbling the football in and taking it on the hop is Doughty he gets hit hard at the 23 he really got a shoestring tackle there and I think the man who made the tackle for Ohio State was Ken Dixon I think it was Ken Dixon or it might have been uh, Perko but they've spotted the ball close to the 23 yard line and Michigan will take over first and 10 as they trail now to Ohio State 10 to 3 we have a minute 14 seconds remaining in the half. Buckeyes with their second lead of the afternoon. See what Mr. Moore is going to do. He's going to throw. That's what he's going to do. And he's being hemmed in. He gets away at the 20. He gets dropped at the 
23-yard line by Holloway. Big Ralph Holloway put the bear hug on him and brought him down, and Michigan asked for the clock to be stopped. And they have it stopped with a minute and four seconds. Second down, 10 yards to go. Holloway comes out. Well, I didn't know whether they'd throw or not. They thought they might play it a little bit conservatively and uh, not put that ball up in the air for grabs, but Mr. Moorhead knows what he's doing back there. He and his coach have talked about it. He's not going to just throw that football, just uh, put it up for grabs. He's going to make sure or relatively certain that he has a receiver downfield in the area where he's throwing the football. And that time, he saw that they were covered, so he wisely ate the football. Actually, a Avoided a loss of five or six yards by getting away from a couple of red jerseys where Holloway secured him around the 24-yard line. You can hear, hold that line, hold that line, and get that ball, and get that ball, all sorts of cheers, as this jam-packed stadium has just been echoing with noise all afternoon. And it will continue, too, for the rest of the ball game. Ten to three. We'll have a great band show from two of perhaps the country's finest musical aggregations. Okay, second down, 10, plays resuming. Couple of men out to the left side, going back to throw is Moorhead. He throws a little swing pass to Taylor. He's to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, 36, 37. Ohio State defending deep, threw the little swing pass to Taylor, hoping that once he caught it, he could fly. But he was secured by Stillwagon, who came back to put a rush. So evidently they were putting about a four-man rush and trying to defend against the long pass, the big bomb. Sticks finally in place, it's a first and 10, 54 seconds remaining to be played. Moorhead has his ball club out with a little more running room at the 37. He's going back to throw, throws a little sideline pass into the Ohio State bench. And that, I'm sure, was designed just to kill that clock. 48 seconds, second down, 10 yards to go. Over defending on that particular play was Ken Lutner, who had dropped off defensively at an end to cover Doughty. And with the incompletion, why, uh, Doug Adams gets a few instructions from the bench. Doughty goes out. They have Staroba and Seymour in there as receivers as Moorhead goes back to throw again. He's throwing out to Taylor at the 45. 40, he fumbles the football. Ohio State picks it up at the 46-yard line. I think it was White who hit him. Forced Taylor to fumble. And Ohio State recovers at the Michigan 46-yard line. 39 seconds, and the Buckeyes have their hands back on the football. Earlier, just trying to get that ball to Taylor, let him try to run it downfield. That's he right, Bob, and I, I think this is as good a time uh, as any to reconfirm that Taylor's been hit pretty hard a few times this afternoon, and so has Moorhead. The, uh, the Buckeye defense uh, so far has been just as deadly as it has most of the season. So the Buckeyes have their hands on the football, and I imagine if they throw at all, they will throw very deep. There's Kern. Takes a handoff to Brockington. Kern's throwing, and it's complete to Campani. He's out of bounds at the 27-yard line. What a great fake Brockington put on. I was looking at Brockington, then glanced back at Kern, went back to Brockington. Brockington made believe that he had that ball tucked in, running with head down, kind of on a gallop. He, he contained the linebackers. They had to respect him. He came up to hit him at Freed Campana. Kern hit Campana, and he ran out of bounds at the 27. 33 seconds left to be played in a half. Ohio State on top, 10 to 3. And they'd like to get another one or get down there close for 3 or 6. Give it to Hayden. He's running to the left side. He gets to the 22. He gets dropped at the 22-yard line. I don't think Ohio State has, maybe they have one timeout left, and they're going to take it right here and now. Timeout for Ohio State with a 10-3 lead over Michigan. Bob, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Uh, Kern has uh, given uh, Michigan something else to think about already here this afternoon. Uh, his passing hasn't looked sharp at all, as sharp at all as you pointed out. We both pointed out in the last few ball games, but these last two he's thrown, uh, I'm certain, uh, will give, as we said, Michigan something else to look out for, which undoubtedly, naturally, will help Ohio State's ground game also. Well, there's some booing going on. Schramm has gone in, but I think the situation is that Ohio State does not have any timeouts remaining in the ball game. Now, if Kern stays in there to hold for him, now Kern's coming over to talk with Hayes, 
and Kern brought Schramm over and says, I don't want him in the ball game, or words to that effect. We'll see how good a, an arguer Kern is. <laughs> I don't think they have a timeout. <laughs> and Kern's going back out there amidst the cheers of the fans, and Schramm's not going back out. So Kern talked Woody out of sending Schramm in, but I think his strategy might have been no timeouts remaining, only 22 seconds. If they try a play, let's say a pass or a run, and they get the ball a little closer, maybe they couldn't get him into the ball game and line him up in time. So Kern, second down and six, about the 22-yard line of Michigan Territory. He's going to throw. He rolls out. He hits Brockington. He's to the 20, to the 19, and he's dropped right there. And he was hit down, and Brockington's complaining that Betts had the face mask on. They're trying to line up 11, 10, 9, the clock's ticking off. Schramm is going to kick a field goal of about 37 yards. Campano holding for him. I don't know if they'll get the play off. Now they shift a little bit, and they don't get the play off, and I think the half is over, but we'll have to wait and see. There's a discussion down on the field, so hang on to your hats for the moment. And Woody's very upset, uh, Bob. We may confirm that. Had his hat off. I think that's going to be it. That's the end of the half. And the score is Ohio State 10 and Michigan 3. We'll be back in a minute. Here's know when you've got an operation in front of you. But when you do, it's good to know our operation is behind you. We call our operation Nationwide's Major Medical Plan. Our plan will help you pay for doctor fees, room and board, and medicine. Major medical insurance, part of Nationwide's blanket protection for your family. Who can you call on for better insurance? Who can you call Nationwide? Who can you count on for blanket protection? And know that you'll find peace of mind. Call the man. back at Ohio Stadium in Columbus, Ohio with a halftime score as Ohio State 10, Michigan 3. And we're almost ready to play football. But Bob, uh, before I give this uh, back to you, we'll point out that Ohio State during the first half had 10 first downs, Michigan 4. Net yards rushing, Ohio State 107 to Michigan's 18. And as you pointed out, the total net gain for Michigan thus far rushing and passing. Well, let's see. 74, which means in fifth which means you, three yards per play, Bob. That's a good idea of what the Ohio State defense has done so far this uh, this first half in this great monumental, as we said, football game. Back to Bob and Wag Bob Wagner now as both teams are on the field for resumption of play in the third quarter. Bob? Okay, Earl, thank you. And what a great show we had put on by the University of Michigan and the Ohio State marching bands. Just fantastic. Ohio State came out. They were walking about uh, running bouncing about a foot or so off the ground as they came out. Michigan coming out not nearly uh, with the uh, verve and zest that they had in that uh, coming out here prior to the kickoff. And I'm not being partial when I say that. That's just about the way they came out. Here's some halftime scores for you. Penn State leading Pitt, 35 to 9. VMI and Virginia Tech tied up at 7 and 7. Purdue is ahead of Indiana at the half, 13 to nothing. Notre Dame, LSU scoreless at the end of the half. South Carolina leading Clemson 17 to 10 at the half. Tennessee 14 over Kentucky with the volunteers hoping for a bull bid. At the half, it's Harvard 14 yield nothing in that big uh, Ivy League rivalry. Minnesota's ahead of Wisconsin 7 to nothing at the end of the quarter. At the half, Northwest leads Michigan State 17 to 13. And listen to this score. Cincinnati 5, Miami of Ohio nothing at the end of the quarter. So there are a lot of great football games being played around the country. I don't think many of them can rival this one. Ohio State will be receiving Michigan's kickoff to start the second half. The Buckeyes with a 10 to three lead. Dana Coyne, who kicked a 20 or 31 yard field goal to get Michigan its only points on the board this afternoon, will be booting it for the maize and blue.
Gen 3, Ohio State. We've had two bomb threats here this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody's left the ballpark. They've announced it on the public address system just a few moments ago that they had their second bomb threat of the afternoon, but nobody, I don't think, has left. Well, there's one, two, <laughs> three, four, five people in the south practice field. Made me a little nervous while ago, though, Bob, when you described the game as we're sitting on a keg of dynamite. Well, I didn't know that, maybe. <laughs> okay, here's Coyne's kick, and he hit it real hard, sending Campana about four or five yards deep in the end zone. He's not coming out with it. Ohio State will take it over, first and ten, running at their own 20. Well, I didn't hear the announcement of the first one, so it didn't bother me too much. <laughs> but the second one... <laughs> Ohio State taking over, first and ten, at their own 20-yard line. It's a little cooler here. I'd say the temperature now probably down into the 30s. Sun still shining this late fall afternoon, going almost into early winter, in the game of the decade, as it's been called. Ohio State running against a 5-3 defense right now is Kern. Turns, hands the ball off to Rockington, who spill behind the line of scrimmage. Loses a couple of yards. Henry Hill breaking through to make contact with him first. Got an assist along the play from Tom Beckman. Second down for the Buckeyes and about 12 or maybe 13 yards to go. Instructions here as to what to do in the second half of this ball game. Michigan's defense playing Ohio State up there very, very tight. There's the turn. They give it to Hayden. Hayden comes back to the original line of scrimmage. Tumbles a football. A scramble for it. I think Michigan has it. Now we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Michigan ball players thought they did, but they don't. Hayden got hit at the 20, and the ball squirted out there about seven or eight yards. Got hit hard by Hill. Ohio State recovers, and on a third down situation, they can't get campaign. Yes, they can. They're going to get him into the ball game with a play. He's replacing Jankowski. No, he isn't. Jankowski's going to go back in, and maybe it'll be Teague who comes out. Merv Teague. Here's the answer. the first down, but it gives Ohio State a little more room and better field position, and every yard counts down in that particular end of the field. Lego will be kicking, and it's uh, into a bit of a breeze. Darden and Elliott going back. They're standing inside their own 45-yard line. And Lego will get the kick away from about his own 18. Looks like about a six-man rush put on. Lego's going to hit it. And hits an end of rain kick in front of the Michigan bench. And it bounds out of bounds, I think, at midfield. It does. Right at the 50-yard line. And Bo Schemplecker was uh, motioning for the ball to get out of bounds a little sooner. Kick of 23 yards from Lego. He kicked three punts in the first half for a 30-yard average. And uh, Michigan, with very fine field position, takes over at the 50-yard line. Okay, Bucks going on defense now, and they have to stop the Michigan ball club, as they did the first half quite well. There's the turn, and they give the ball now to Seifert. First carry of the afternoon, he picks up about four, hitting off the right side down close to the 45-yard line, where Lutner contained him. First time he's carried the ball this afternoon. Second time, excuse me. Fritz Seifert from Darien, Connecticut. Seifert, Taylor, and Dowdy. The three setbacks are all juniors. Moorhead, the only senior in the, senior in the starting backfield. Now right of the right side. Moorhead keeps it. 45, 44, maybe the 43. He picked the pitch out, held, held onto the football, and picked up an additional three yards. Make it third down now. About three yards to go. Two and a half to three yards to go. Mark Devevic finally stopped him. Checking in offensively. Or going out is number 81. Schumacher. Harris comes in. Yeah, the end's in tight. It's a power eye to the right side. Moorhead working on a long count. Little bit of action, and somebody from Michigan jumped the gun and went outside. Somebody on the right side. I don't know whether it was the right guard, Coyle, or the right tackle, Dan Deerdorf. But it's a five-yard walk-off against Michigan, and this came at a most inopportune time for the Wolverines. Instead of having third down and about two and a half yards to go, they have seven and a half yards to go, and I'm sure this is going to alter the play. Staroba comes back in, replacing Doughty. Third down, about seven, seven and a half yards to go. And 
crucial defensive play early in the second half for the Buckeyes. Moorhead is rolling to the left side, looks for the man open. It's Daroba, and he's out of bounds at the 36 at the first down for Michigan at the Ohio State 36. Daroba went downfield, cut over to the sidelines, and made the prototype catch just a yard or so inbounds. He was given coverage by Howard, but did make the reception. The first down for Michigan, only their fifth of the afternoon. Let me hang on to that football and have a life. Ohio State 10, Michigan 3. We're in the first three or four minutes of the second half. to the left side. Get the ball up to Dowdy on a power play. Hits to the 35. Hit first by uh, hit secured by Taylor but he was uh, upended a little bit by Shad Williams. Gain of a couple. Maybe a yard and a half. Second down eight let's call it. Ball across the 35 yard line in Ohio territory. Harris comes back into the ball game. He can really fly and he's way out to the right side. Howard's going to give him coverage. All right, formation again. Moorhead, fakes, rolls right, makes for the man open. Throws, and he throws it on the hop. It's no good. He had Harris, who had gone downfield about 10 yards, and then cut to the sideline. But Moorhead's pass was underthrown. It's third down, eight yards to go. The ball at the Ohio State 35, just across it, inside it. And another key third down play. I don't know how far Dana Coyne can kick, but he's a pretty good kicker. He's five out of 13 in field goals. As Moorhead rolls to the right side. Has some time close, and it's to Sorova. He made the catch, but he did not pick up the first down at the Ohio State 26. Sorova, good catch. And I don't think, I think they're going to bring the sticks in. I, it didn't appear to me as if he had it, but we'll have to wait for the official. Gene Calhoun to bring in the sticks and it's going to be uh, I'd say maybe six inches shy so what do you do here coach they're having a meeting of the minds over there four or five of the coaches and it would appear that they're going to go for the first down because they don't have Dana Coyne their kicker in there number 76 Jim Bradstetter a 6'2", 256-pound tackle came in to bring the play in. What they're going to do in a fourth down and uh, inches situation close to the Ohio State 26-yard line. They have the ends in tight. Have Dottie to the right in that power eye backfield. You'll know in just a second. Moorhead turns, gives the ball to Seifert, first down at the 24. He got more than enough for the first down, and they ran right over the big tackle, Brant Stetter, that they sent into the ball game. Mike Sensabaugh and Howard got him, but not until he got to the Ohio State 24-yard line. And it's a first down for Michigan. They picked up two in this drive. They only picked up four in the first half. <laughs> Sign goes up in front of the Michigan band. How'd you like that one, Woody? <laughs> first and ten. Wolverines now on a bit of a drive. Give it to Taylor. No place for him to go. He got hit right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe he picked up a half a yard. Looked like Stillwagon and Williams making the stop of Bill Taylor. And negligible yardage, if any. Maybe the length of the football. Second down, 10 yards to go. If the Buckeyes can get out of this without any points scored, or even three, it'll be something of a miracle because they... Uh, They've been uh, tested this afternoon. There's a looking pass. It's good down to the 15-yard line to Doughty. And it's a big gainer of about eight yards. And it'll bring up third down a yard, yard and a half to go. Doughty on just a quick look-in pass. With Moorhead hardly dropping back at all. And now Mr. Moorhead is mixing them up real good. Or Bo Schembechler is as he brings in substitutions with each and every play. Trying to keep that defense honest. Third down, a long yard at the Ohio State 15 with the Buckeyes leading 10 to 3. Moorhead. Seifert, first down, I believe, around the 13-yard line. It is a first down for Michigan at the 13. They've reeled off three in a row from midfield. And it's a first and 10 from the Ohio State 13. And now the Ohio State fans begin to worry just a little bit more. 
send Schumacher out and bring in Seymour. Way to the left side comes Staroba. Seifert tries to go up the right side, hit hard at the line of scrimmage by Adams. Doug Adams. I'll never forget Earl, that tackle he put on Stan Brown from Purdue on a fourth in the yard situation. Boy, did he hit him in midair. He cut him right off in the middle of midair, Bob. That's right, and there was only one yard to go on that play, and it never was uh, consummated. Second down and ten. Michigan at Ohio's 13. The Buckeyes lead by seven. Moorhead surveys the situation. He's rolling out to his left side. Cox the arm to throw in the end zone, and it's six points! Mr. Roba, as he got by Howard and sent the ball deep in the corner, and it's a 10 to 9 ball game. And Michigan's right back in there, and uh, the band on the far side, and about the four or five thousand Michigan fans in attendance have gone to their feet shouting that they're back in the ball game. And they have a big sign now, M, the mark of excellence. Dana Coyne's going to try to tie it up. 13 yard pass to Saroba. And Mr. Coyne can tie it up right here. There's the spot. It's blocked by Anderson. And it's a timeout with a score. Ohio State 10, Michigan 9. Man, would you spend $5.08 a month to make sure your home is left free and clear to your family if you should die? That's all a typical 20-year nationwide mortgage protection plan costs. If you're 30 and the mortgage balance on your home is $10,000, you can get a $10,000 mortgage protection plan for just $5.08 a month from Nationwide Life Insurance of Columbus, Ohio. For details about the low-cost protection for any size mortgage, call your Nationwide agent. He's listed in the yellow pages. Well, if there's anything a ball club needs to prep them up, it's a play like that. I thought Anderson was offside. I really did, because he had... He started before the snap. I guess he figured if he was offside, nothing lost. But evidently, he did not cross that neutral zone. He just had a couple of steps start. And uh, he got in there and got a hand on that, that kick of Dana Coins to try to the equalize here the 10th point, which was not made. And number 26, Timmy Anderson. Probably had his finest moment as a Buckeye right there. Dana Coyne kicking off, 10 to nine, Ohio State leads now eight and a half. Remaining here in the third quarter. After the pass to uh, Staroba, looked like it might tie it up. Waiting for Coyne to get set to boot it off. Still waiting. <laughs> and the fans are becoming a little impatient now. Okay, we're all set. Campana the deep man, along with Brockington. And it might be uh, Brockington getting it at the 12. Bobbles it at the 15, 20, 25. Tries to come wide and gets trapped at the 25 yard line. And a nice grab by number 37, Tom Key. First and ten, Buckeyes running at their 25, and you hear the go, 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 go now from the Ohio State cheering section. Ten to nine, Ohio State ahead by a point. Rick Galvis coming into the ball game for the first time this afternoon. I think it's the first time. I haven't, don't recall seeing him a little earlier. Galvis from Mentor, Ohio. Darren calls the signal out. Give to Brockington. Picks up a couple going right up the middle. You have to say at this point, Bob, that Larry Zelina uh, has been conspicuous by his absence, and we're wondering now if he will see action in this football game. Well, he had indicated beforehand that he would, would uh, make an appearance at least. Well, I noticed that uh, he was pacing up and down there a little while ago, very, very anxious to get in the football game, and I, I'd like to see him get in. He's, he's done so much for this team. Second down, about eight yards to go. The Bucks at their own 27, leading by just a point. Give the ball off to Hayden. Hayden comes out across the 30, 31, maybe the 32-yard line. That'll leave third down and uh, a little more than three yards to go. Have to get the ball across their own 35-yard line. 
So it's about the, they spotted the ball just across the 31. So they have to pick up four long yards on a third down situation. Buckeyes leading 10 to nine, seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Darren checks him out, running against a five-man line with a couple of linebackers. Rolls to the left, cocks his arm to throw. He can't throw, he's running, he's going to lose yardage. Back around the 26-yard line. I think that was the option play to Jankowski with run in mind first and then throwing it. Jankowski got open, but he was never open. And it brings up a fourth down situation and 10 yards to go. Beckman and Phil Seymour putting the pressure on Kern. And there was also good defensive pressure on the secondary, so that he couldn't throw. Gary Lego to kick Darden and Elliott. High snap, big rush put on. Gets a high, wobbly kick away. Fair catch call for by Darden at midfield, and he has it at the 49. So that's twice now. We've not had long kicks affording Michigan real good field position. And Lego got both of them high into the breeze, and they kind of hung up. That one was a kick of about uh, 25 yards. And Bobby, as we pointed out in the first half, the superiority of the Michigan uh, passing is, uh, punting is more pronounced uh, as this uh, ball game goes along. In the first half, for instance, they punted four times for a 42-yard average, while Ohio State was punting three times for just a 30-yard average. And we've seen two more short ones in this uh, third quarter and uh, these things can be a little devastating as time goes along. And we have a timeout with the score Ohio State 10, Michigan 9. Moorhead taking the opportunity of the timeout to go over and talk with Bo Schembechler now and as I said just a few moments ago Michigan has been afforded excellent field position the last two times they've forced Ohio State into a punting situation. And uh, they had the ball at the 50-yard line. Now they have it at just uh, across the 50 now in their own territory, short of the 50 by a step or so or a half a yard. They'll be putting it in play from that position. They trail by a point, and uh, you've got to say that they do have that great field position. If, and with a kicker like Coyne, as I say, I don't know how, what his greatest distance is, but they're in pretty good shape. So the Buckeyes will have to dig in and take that football away from them. There's the turn, they give it to Taylor. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage by Stillwagon at the fort, at the 50 yard line. Finally ridden down, but uh, Stillwagon got him at the line of, a yard or so behind the line of scrimmage and Taylor's momentum carried him out to the 50. Second down, 10 yards to go. What a ball player this Jim Stillwagon is. I know we've said this so many times this season, but he's just great. He personifies dedication. There's a turn to Taylor. Taylor hit and dropped after he picks up a yard. This time it was White and Adams who stopped him. Right at the 49-yard line. They tried it right the first time. They came back to the left. We stopped both times. In the first half, Michigan picked up only 14 yards rushing. They picked up a little more than that in that drive. Of 50 yards that uh, saw them score in 10 plays. Third down, eight yards to go. More heads back to throw. Looking for the man open. He's being chased by Williams. He throws. It's incomplete. He had coverage on Staroba, Stur rather. Had to go for the secondary man. Couldn't hit him as he was under a little bit of pressure by Shad Williams. Stan White and Doug Adams were right around the intended receiver. It's forcing Staroba to go back and kick. He'll get the boot away from about his own 41 or 42. Anderson, single safety deep at the 10. There's the kick, and he's trying to get it out of bounds. Anderson's coming over to get it at the 10. Tries to go left to the 15, comes upfield, gets a block, tries to come back, and he gets out as far as about the 19-yard line. That was a little, a few moments of indecision there on the part of Anderson, who couldn't quite make up his mind which way to go. Bill Taylor came down to make the grab on him at the 19. But the Bucks stopped the Wolverines on three plays, giving them just a yard or two, and now they have their hands on the football. Ohio State has not moved the ball in the second half. They do not have a first down. We have 5-18 remaining to be played in the third quarter. Ohio State on top by a point, 10-9. to Kern rolls right, gives the ball off to Hayden. He cuts back in and gets out to the 22, close to the 23. Hit first by Pete Newell, and then secured at that point. 
second down. About six, six and a half yards to go. Try to pick up that announcement on the PA system, thinking it might be a score, but evidently not. Here we go, second down. Ten yards to go for the Buckeyes, and Kern on a draw to uh, Hayden. Uh, Brockington gets out to the 26, maybe the 27. Have to go to the butt of 29. It'll be third down and a couple. Schramm put Ohio State on top, three to nothing. Coin tied it in early in the second quarter. Pass to Jankowski with about a minute 18 left. Put Ohio State on top, and then a pass to Sarova. Brought them within a point. Anderson blocked the extra point try. And that's the way it is now, 10 to nine. Full house backfield with the ends in tight. Oh, little jumping by Teague there. Prematurely to the count. It's going to be costly for the Buckeyes. Five-yard walk-off against Ohio State. And that's the second time today that five-yard penalty has hurt them. On a third down short, now they have a fourth down long situation. Or third down, rather, and uh, about seven yards to go. Donovan Jankowski going in. Only sent one man out. <laughs> now they get another man out. Michigan with five linemen, three linebackers, and they're fairly close. And the safety men only about seven yards off the line of scrimmage, knowing that, well, Kern's going back to throw. Looks for the man up. He's going to throw deep to Jankowski, and he quite can't get to the football. It brings up a fourth down situation, and Hill was shaken up a little bit on the play. Henry Hill, as he was putting pressure on Kern. He's going to hobble off of there, I believe. Now he goes back into the huddle. Looking to see who checked in for Ohio State to do the kicking. And it's Lego with Elliott and Darden coming out to midfield. Hill did go out. There's a snap to Lego. Gets a kick away and hits it a hard end of running kick. Fair catch called for by Elliott at his 48 yard line and Michigan will put it in play right there. So this is the third time now in the second half that Michigan has had the ball close to midfield on Ohio State punts. And again, the defense has called on to stop them. There's a timeout with a score. Ohio State 10 and Michigan 9. And here's one fact that every man should know. One out of every three men over 35 will be disabled before 65. One out of three. Can you afford to be one of these? Where would the money come from if you were out of work? Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company of Columbus, Ohio can see that you get the cash you need. Nationwide's guarantor income plan makes sure your family has cash, even though you are laid up due to accident or sickness. For details, contact your local Nationwide agent. He's listed in the yellow pages. Earl, I hate to admit this, but at one time, I lived up in Ann Arbor. <laughs> From 1959 to 64. I was trying to forget that, Bob. And I uh, had the privilege of broadcasting the University of Michigan football games up there for four or five years, and I thoroughly enjoyed them. Came back into Ohio. I say back because I've been here for about eight or ten years prior to that. And came back to Ohio, and then they started doing the games a couple years ago for Ohio State. And a lot of people uh, asked me where my allegiance is. Well, there's no question about that. I think it's rather obvious. So we try to give a kind of a neutral... You know, of the ball game, you might say. It's a little difficult at times because we know the coaches, we know a lot of the players, and uh, we kind of get carried away by these. But here we have Michigan with their hands on the football again for the third time in the second half. They scored once this half to come within a point, 10 to 9. 337 left to play in the third quarter as Moorhead turns and gives the ball to Taylor, and there's not too much room for him to go. Still wagon and Chad Williams stopping him at midfield. A pickup of a couple for a second down and eight, right at midfield. The ball's just about in the center of the big scarlet and gray O. Harris checks in, replacing Stavota. Taylor has picked up 25 carries, or 25 yards and 13 carries. Far, far below his average this afternoon. Moorhead rolling to the right side. Finley marker goes down. He throws. And it's to Doughty. 
And he caught the football, and I don't know whether they've spotted the play. He was driven way back beyond the line of scrimmage. But I think uh, they're going to bring it back, and let's see what the walk-off is going to be. Having the discussion with Gene Calhoun, the referee, and it appears that the penalty would be against uh, Michigan. And it's a five-yard walk-off. Illegal procedure. And I can't understand what a, an illegal procedure would be unless they weren't set there on the line. Somebody might have moved without going across the so-called neutral zone. It'll be second down, 13 yards to go. Michigan with the ball just across their own 45. Dottie way wide left side. Warhead going back to throw. Throws to the right side. Had a man open and he dropped it at midfield. Paul Seymour. He's a big one, 6'5", 240. Had it at, mid at midfield. He might have picked up an additional four or five yards, but he couldn't hang on to it. And Mr. Moorhead deserved a better fate, to be all fair about it. Third down. Holloway comes in replacing Chad Williams. Third down. 12 or 13 yards to go for Michigan. Trailing by a point to Ohio State. 2.45 left to play third quarter. Moorhead sets his backs and drops back to throw. Puts for a man open. He's going to get tackled back at the 38-yard line by Stillwagon. Another reason why Stillwagon will be an All-American on most teams. But again, we said this. The Michigan quarterback wisely would rather lose that yardage of seven, eight yards than risk an interception. It's going to force Staroba in the kick again. He's boomed some dandies. Field in shadows now, and he gets a good foot on it. Sends it up pretty good. Anderson waiting for it at the 22. He comes to the 25, spins away from one man, gets hit at the 27. Dropped at the 27-yard line by Taylor. And by number 65, Reggie McKenzie. And the Buckeyes have the football for the fourth time this afternoon in the second half. They've been unable to pick up a first down in the second half, while Michigan has picked up about three. And Michigan, of course, has scored here in the second half. They're trailing Ohio State by a point. Kern is asking for some quiet, and he gets it. As Jankowski wide to the left side, and Kern is rolling left. Hands the ball off to Hayden at the last moment, and he gets to the 29. Almost like a halfback draw. WGAR Cleveland. Going up for a counter saw, then comes up and takes the handoff. Taylor and Beckman. They sound like a defensive duo for this Michigan ball club, which uh, came in here only giving up 70 points in nine ball games. They've given up 10 in this one. There to the Hayden, 30, 32, 33, and to the 34. It'll be third down, three yards to go for the Buckeyes at their own 34-yard line. And this must be the third time or the fourth time here in the second half that they've been faced with this third and three or third and four situation. They've not been able to capitalize on it yet. Once I think they got a little closer and had a motion penalty. Ohio State's been plagued by that this year. Ends in tight. As Kern rolls to the left side, hands the ball off to Brock Hayden, and he gets the first down to the 40. He picked up about six yards. Getting the ball out to the 40, Huff and Beckman and Vince. And Bob, you've got to think at this point that figuring uh, the Wolves would be keying a lot on Brockington. Uh, we've noticed right straight through the ball game that Hayden is the workhorse today. You took the words right out of my mouth. I believe, really was going to say that. Here it is, first and ten at the Ohio State 40. Kern coming to the right side. Gives the ball up to Hayden again. 45, 50, just inside the 50. He's dropped. It's another first down for the Buckeyes. It was Elliott, the safety man, who stopped him. And Ohio State thwarted in four attempts. Now picked up two first downs back to back. And they have the ball just across the 50. They have only 17 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Ohio State on top, 10 to 9, in a real nail-biter. 
Aaron has his ends in tight. Throws to the left side. Hands it off to Galvis. Galvis head down. Gets to the 45. Inside the 45. Where Huff stopped him. Marty Huff. And Henry Hill. 39. Five yard pickup for young Rick Galvis. That's the end of the third quarter, my friends. And the score is Ohio State 10 and Michigan 9. Buckeyes have second down. About five yards to go, just across the Michigan 45-yard line. Jankowski comes way wide where Elliott covers him. Brockington and Hayden are the setbacks. And it's Brockington who gets bucked down to the 40. Or close to it. A real quick hitter is spotting it at the 41. It'll be third down. About a yard and a half to go. Bob, the wind is at the back of the Buckeyes now. And if it's a, not much consequence, it's worth mentioning that it might slow some of Staroba's punch down somewhat. I don't know. He can get a foot into it, can he? He certainly can. Sam Hayden back into the ball game in Camp Fan, and they're running from the full house backfield with the ends in tight. Michigan a 5-3 defense. Linebackers are just a step or so off the line. They give the ball to Brockington. He gets the first down to the 38-yard line in Michigan territory. Or Gussett stopped him. And for the Buckeyes, what, the 13? 13 first downs. Only three here in the second half. And Woody just might forsake any fanciness. Let's try to grind them out three, four yards of the try. I'm telling you, it's going to be the biggest celebration in Columbus since World War II <laughs> if Ohio State wins. Kern is rolling this side, gives the ball to Hayden. The 35, the 34, almost to the 33-yard line. Leo Hayden got upended by Phil Seymour, but not until he'd picked up about, well, let's see where they spot it. Let's give him about four, four and a half yards. Say second down and six yards to go. Yes, sir, VJ Day will not have anything on the city of Columbus if Ohio State can win this one this afternoon. And they've got to maintain this lead for 13 minutes and 35 more seconds. A lead of a point. Darren rolls to the right to Leo Hayden. Hayden to the 30, 28, 27. That's close to the first down. Up in Gusich again, but I think it might necessitate a measurement. It is a first down. Coming in for the Buckeyes, it's Charlie Bonica replacing Phil Strickland. Ohio State leads by a point, 10 to 9. 13-15 left to play. At the Michigan 27-yard line, Kern asks for quiet. He gets it. Gets real, real quiet. Give it to Hayden. He doesn't make it this time. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about as far as he got. Cheney was out, putting a good block on Bruce Elliott to take him out of the play, but uh, Hayden couldn't get beyond the line of scrimmage. Galvis checks into the ball game for Hayden. Leo's been a real tiger out there this afternoon. Comes over to talk with Hubbard. Jankowski goes wide right, second and ten situation. Takes a handoff, Kearns rolling to the right side, lobs a pass to White at the 20, 15, he's at around the 12 yard line. Dan White picks up a first down for Ohio State on a 15 yard pickup. That's the 14th first down, and the Bucks are down there 12 yards away, or 11 yards away, from adding to their one-point lead that they have right now. Turn is 7 out of 10 this afternoon. Had one intercepted, which led to the tying field goal, incidentally. Buckeye fans yelling, go, go, go. Turn asking for a little bit of time, a little bit of quiet. He's rolling to the left side, hands the ball out to Galvis, who gets to the line. Maybe close to the eighth, Rick Galvis. Garden and Huff stopping Galvis after he picked up about two yards. Second down, eight yards to go for the Buckeyes. Brian Donovan comes into the ball game, replacing Dick Poon at a guard for Ohio State. Michigan defense trying to dig in. Jankowski comes wide to the left side. 
at the nine yard line. Clearing comes back. Hands the ball. No, takes the hand out. Throws down the end zone. Batted into the air and out of bounds. That ball was batted into the air by a defensive man, Darden. White was trying to unscramble the football as it came down, and there were a couple of Michigan defenders down there trying to get down there for it, too. The goes as an incomplete pass. Henry Hill was injured on the play, and he goes hobbling off the far side. What a game he's played. Tom Campana comes into the ball game, replacing Jan White, and he'll be bringing in a play, too. Here it is third down and eight at the Michigan nine. Buckeyes would really like to get seven points on the board here. Jankowski wide to the left side. Karen comes back, takes a handoff under some pressure. Throws to White, he gets hit at the nine. By Betts. Campana that was who got hit, or was it Brockington? Brockington right at the nine yard line. And Schramm comes in. That ball is at the inbound markers on the near side of the field. That's the press box side of the field, and it'll be a little bit of an angle for him. He'll spot the ball at the 17. It'll be a 27-yard field goal attempt. Campana holding, and Fred Schramm trying to make his second field goal of the afternoon. There's the spot. There's the kick. Looks good. It is. And it's a timeout. The score's Ohio State 13, Michigan 9. Well, here's a warning to all travelers. Not all accident insurance policies cover you everywhere you go. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company of Columbus, Ohio has a policy that does. The Nationwide Selector Accident Plan. No matter where you are, you're covered. Your nationwide protection travels with you wherever you go. For more information about the Selector Accident Plan, contact your local Nationwide agent. He's listed in the yellow pages. Bob, that was so true uh, through the uprights that I, I believe the official signaled good before it even hit the ground. Well, I was kind of happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have that same sentiment shared with a few thousand people here this afternoon. So now the Buckeyes have taken Michigan out of field goal since they're trailing by four points. And I'm sure this could uh, be a very, very deciding factor in this ball game. Of course, I'm sure they'd rather have be leading 17 to 9, but uh, they're up by 4. And we have 10-49 remaining to be played in the fourth and final quarter. And Stanley White will be kicking off for Ohio State. He hit this one real good. Way back, nine yards deep in the end zone. And Rather says, no, sir, I'm not going to throw it out. I think uh, Mr. White had the adrenaline running pretty good there, didn't you? <laughs> I'd say so, Bob. If that had been a little over this way, it had been a field goal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. I know you're kidding about it, but we'll have somebody calling up and saying you can't kick a field goal on the kick. <laughs> Okay, the Bucks digging in. Michigan down by four. A little better than ten minutes left to play. A lot of time. Get the ball up the side but he gets hit at the 21. That interior line for Ohio State, well, they've got to be something else. Held Michigan to 14 yards rushing in the first half. I don't know how many yards they have rushing in the second half. But it can't be too many. Most of the yardage has been through the air, resulting in the touchdown. Second down, nine at their own 21. Moorhead rolling to the left side to throw, and he gets wrapped up at the 18-yard line. Chad hit him first, and still wagon, and the Bennett wrapped him up. Chad kind of spun him around, and Williams was mad because he didn't wrap him up. Chad doesn't know that there are 10 other guys on the field. He thinks he has to do it all, all himself. <laughs> Third down, about 12, maybe 13 yards to go. And isn't it strange what a field goal or a touchdown will do to the defensive ball club? Big play right here. They've got to contain him on this one. Moorhead rolls to the right side, looks for the man up and throws. Intercepted by White at the 25, 20, 16, 10, 8. He's lost the hair. It is, Bob. <laughs> and this place is going stuck. 
Three feet off the ground when he picked that one up. It looked like a basketball center. I've marked down some score predictions here. I'll tell them to you a little bit later on. Full house backfield with the ends in tight. Darren Tyrants gets the ball out to Brockington. He didn't get much at all. He ran into a whole host of bodies that were very, very determined to stop him. And they did. This hill, he goes whipping off the ball game, but when they blow the whistle and say you're on defense, he comes right back. Very, very determined and excellent football player from Michigan. Second down, goal to go from about the eight. Michigan, seven-man line, four linebackers. Keeps it himself, tries to go outside the five, the four, and Kurt is down at the four-yard line. By number 33, Taylor, Mike Taylor. It'll be third down, goal to go from the four-yard line. Here comes Toon checking back into the ball game, bringing a play from the bench. Replacing Brian Donovan. That Donovan story has got to be a case in itself. Suffered a couple knee operations, didn't get to play much, still contributes to the cause. Ball out, backfield ends in tight, they're nice for quiet. Keeps it rolls, pitches, it's a touchdown! Leo Hayden on the quick pitch from turn, touchdown, and it's a 19 to 9 ball game. 19 to 9, Ohio State over Michigan. Benjamin, if you do that again, we're going to be engaged. <laughs> <laughs> Camp out of holding. Fred slam in to try and make it 20 to 9. We'll let you decide when you hear the crowd. That's right. It's a timeout and the score is Ohio State 20, Michigan 9. Got a growing family and a tight budget. Well, here's news about a new kind of life insurance that's just made for you. It's the new family security plan offered by Nationwide Life Insurance of Columbus, Ohio. It can pay more than triple benefits when the children are young. As much as $34,000 for a $10,000 policy. Yet it's budgeted for beginning families with modest income. Call your Nationwide agent. He's listed in the yellow pages. Well, Bob, going to be a hot time in the old town tonight. Well, we still have 8:14. I'm I'm a, a little bit of a on the defensive all the time. I got two or three fingers crossed, Bob. My legs crossed. <laughs> that was Leo Hayden who went the final four with 8:14 remaining to be played in the fourth quarter. Give Ohio State that 20 to nine lead. Stanley White will be kicking off. That big interception by Stan White. Hayden might have scored the touchdown, but Stanley White made the interception and set it up. And now White, young fellow out of Kent, Ohio, will be back again next year. Get set to tee it up and give it a boot. Okay, we're set. There's a kickoff, very high, down around the three-yard line. Rather goes back in the end zone, fumbles the football, and decides to come out with it. He fumbles it, he gets to the three, and he's hit hard! And not ten men from Ohio State! Hey, that's what this crowd's been waiting for, Bob. Man, he got hit by ten men. There was only one man from Ohio State that wasn't there. Well, Rather had a tough time trying to pick it up in the end zone. Dowdy went back to help him. He got out to the two and got hit and drove, well, he was driven back almost into Worthington. 
It's Michigan's ball at the two-yard line. And you better give this defensive ball club a saliva test after this ball game because there's something else. <laughs> Moorhead trying to get his ball club out, tries to sneak out, can't go. He might have made a half a yard, but he got pushed back. You can't say who pushed him back. There's like six guys drove him back into the end zone. You want to see a picture of despair, Earl? Look over at the <laughs> Michigan bench. Yes, sir, Bob, there's not, uh, not much emotion being shown over there now. Look at the Michigan band. I mean, it, they're almost like a still picture. Second down, nine yards to go. Going to the right side as Moorhead throws a pass incomplete and sent it for Saroba. He was being covered by Howard and Sensabaugh. Third down, nine yards to go. Michigan at their three. If they have to cough up the football now, you'll hear a tremendous cheer. Chad Williams going back in for Holloway. Substitution for Michigan is Jerry Shoemaker. Replacing Seymour. Third down nine. Michigan running at their own three-yard line. They draw it out. Taylor, he gets out to the six, maybe the seven-yard line. Lutner. I think it was Lutner. No, the Bevick. Tackle him at the seven. Fourth down, about five. Ohio State on top, eight to nine. If you left this a little while ago, Stan White intercepted a pass, took it to the nine, Kern pitched out to Hayden, he scored. There's Staroba, about five yards deep in the end zone. Good snap. He hits one off the side of his foot, not an especially long kick at the 40, bounding to 45, bounding at midfield, and it's blown dead at the midfield stripe. Since the ball almost handled that ball. They say Michigan's ball. They say it's Michigan's ball, and Ohio State is arguing that they never had their hands on the football. Kern is out there now talking with one of the officials. Uh, the official rules, I believe, that somebody from Ohio State handled that football, got his hand on it, and has awarded the football to Michigan. He came mighty close to handling it, I'll tell you that, Earl. Yes, he did, Bob. I, I can't figure anything else, but except he got a hand on it, and I've never seen Kern this excited. Uh, they had to carry him out of there right. so he wouldn't go after the official. So it's a big, big break for Michigan. Instead of giving the ball up at midfield, they have it. And now the defense has to dig in and try to stop him again. 6.48 remaining to be played. Ohio State's defense asking the crowd to be quiet. Woody on the field asking too. Get off the field, Woody. Time out. <laughs> <laughs> One of the officials had to call time out. Woody was about eight yards on the field asking for time out. You know, Woody made no complaints about that call, uh, Bob, making me think when the play was over close to him that possibly a hand was on it. Okay, Moorhead has his ball club ready to go. Following the big break, and he goes back to throw. He's a little swing pass out to Taylor at the 45. He's on the feet at the 40, and knocked out of bounds at the 39. It's a first down for Michigan at the Ohio State 39. And how the complexion of a ball game can change. It was Doug Adams who threw him out at around the 38-yard line. Taylor hit pretty hard. He's going off the field before the substitution came in. But he's being replaced now by Preston Henry. A junior out of Flint. Ohio State ahead, 20 to 9, 641 left to play. Fourth and final quarter. Michigan at the Buckeye, 38 for the first down. And Moorhead looks, he's going to throw left. He throws it out there to Skoroba and he's down at the 30. Sense upon Howard. Run him down right at the 30. Second down and a couple. Harris checks in for Michigan, replacing Staroba. Dowdy also goes wide to the left side. Harris comes wide to the right side. And they give the ball up to Henry. Henry at the 30, Henry at the 26, and it's a first down for Michigan at the 26-yard line, brought down by Tatum. Just a bit better than six minutes remaining to be played in the football game. Holloway goes in defensively for Ohio State, and I'm sure he'll replace Shad Williams. He does. 
It's a first down 10 at the Ohio State 26, and we say how the complexion of a football game can change. Instead of giving up the football at the 50, Michigan took it. They gained about 45 yards on the punt. Moorhead back to throw, looks for the man open, too long, over the head of Doughty. Staroba had cut to the sidelines and then flew down to the end zone, and in the vacated spot they were trying to get Doughty, but he overthrew him. Stops the clock with 5.42 left to play. Ohio State ahead, 20 to 9. the stadium of course along with uh, I don't know I don't know whether they ever did announce how many fans were in attendance today I'm sure it was a new stadium record though two men wide to the right Harris and Doughty and Moorhead's going to try to hit one of them he throws deep down in the end zone and it's too long out of the end zone Harris made a great valiant try but he was a couple of steps out of the end zone being covered by Howard that stops the clock. It's still third and ten at the Ohio State 26-yard line. 5.36 remaining to be played. Still lots of time. 20-9, to 9, Ohio State ahead of Michigan. As Billy Taylor checks back in for Michigan, Williams comes back in to replace Holloway for Ohio State. Big play right here. I'm next two if they don't make this one. Moorhead rolls out, hands off to Taylor, trying to go wide. The 25-24 stopped right there by Williams. Debevic. And White. Still wagon. Holloway comes back in. Fourth down. Eight yards to go at the Ohio State 24. Michigan has to maintain position on this play. What could be all over for him. And Moorhead, back to throw. Looks up the middle, throws. It's complete to Dowdy, and he fumbles the football at the 12-yard line. He couldn't hang on to it. It was a low pass about off his knees. It appeared that he had it for the moment, then he bobbled it. So Ohio State takes over at their 24-yard line. And Rex Stern goes back in to direct the attack. And a hand goes up to the defensive unit. I see Tatum has the red headband. <laughs> Seat comes off. We have 4.58 remaining to be played in the contest. We're having a timeout for the moment uh, till both ball clubs kind of regroup themselves. And we'll take uh, 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Nationwide Insurance Football Network. 1220 WGAI. They just made the announcement, the largest crowd in the history of the stadium. 87,331. 19 of the last 20 games, we've led the nation in attendance. Average of 86,490. These are all statistics given us by the press box now on the public address system. Somebody's added a kazoo to the marching band, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Ohio State on offense now, just a shade less than five minutes remaining. They'd like to pick up a couple of first downs and hang on to the football. Darren Rose to the right side, hands it off to Hayden. He comes out to the 25, 26, 27. Leo Hayden. Brought down by Huff. Got some assistance on the play from number 68, Greg Ellis. Who's out of Connersville, Indiana. Hayden has picked up 102 yards and 25 carries. It's his finest hour. I'm sure of that. pointed out there might be keying on Brockington which has freed Hayden a little bit but Brockington carries this time hangs onto the football as he gets bumped hard at the 27 or 28 it'll be third down for the Buckeyes and leave about five yards to go 4-10 left to play in the ball game Charlie Bonica comes in for Phil Strickland 
You can probably hear that chanting going up. We don't give a darn for the whole state of Michigan or something close like that. Jankowski comes wide to the left side. Skern rolls to the left side, hands it off to Hayden. He's to 30, 34, 35. First down. First down, Ohio State at their own 35-yard line. And did they ever need that first down? Ellis grabbed him. But uh, Hayden picking his holes beautifully. And I think if anything that's uh, been a little diversification in the Ohio State attack today early has been the fact that they're not hitting straight ahead or slants, but they're starting slant and then they cut back. And the fact that they have Teague in there at an end. Grand rolls to the right side, gives off to Hayden. He gets stopped for the moment, puts his head down and gets up to the 38. Looked like he might have been stopped at the 35, but again, that second effort that we've talked about so many times this year got him out to the 38, where Beckman hit him. Three minutes, 10 seconds. The clock is moving. Ohio State's ahead, 20 to 9 by 11 points. Michigan just waiting, and Ohio State taking a lot of time. Now it's three minutes, and the clock's moving. Second down, six yards to go, almost seven. Gern rolling to the side, hands the ball up to Hayden to the 40, 43, 44. Not enough for the first down, but he'll make it within a couple of yards of being a first down. Gussich and Huff on the stop of Hayden. Tom Campana checks in for Jankowski on a third down and uh, about, a yard, yard, about a yard situation. Have to get the ball up to the 45 and they're at the 44. Full house backfield. Michigan with a 6-2 defense. And they give it to Big John. He gets the first down to the 47. Two minutes, nine seconds. The clock's moving. No, it just stopped till he moved the chain. But as soon as those chains are in place, it'll start again. The Buckeyes with another first down. And if they can get one more, Michigan will never get a chance on the football. Hayden, a big hand as he comes out. I'm telling you, if Ohio State can hang on to this 11-point lead, and it appears that they're going to, this town will go start raving crazy. And Dick Benjamin will be leading them. There's a hand out to Galvis. 45, 50, 45. He breaks to the 40, 30, 30, 25, and down the play off. Dick Galvis finally brought down by Phil Seymour at the Michigan 21-yard line. I think that's the longest gain of the day. It's about a 26-yarder. And a first down for Ohio State at the Michigan 21. A minute 42 seconds, and that clock is now moving. 140 and moving. Dern is going to ask for a timeout with a score Ohio State 20, Michigan 9. Bob, and we have to do this. These seniors who are right in the midst now of winning their 27th victory out of 28 games here. Listen to this list and a, and a final salute for these boys. Rex Kern, Ron Mesajowski, Jack Tatum, Jim Stillwagon, Jan White, Larry Zelina, Leo Hayden, John Brockington, Bruce Jankowski, Phil Strickland, Mark DeVepin, Doug Adams, Tim Anderson, Mike Sankabal, Brian Donovan, Dave Cheney, Dick Kuhn, and Ralph Holloway, all in their final appearance with uh, Bob today in a Buckeye uniform, and what an appearance this has been. And we might say that Galbus is one of the few backfielders, uh, this is sort of a depressing thought, uh, but he showed a lot on that run, will be one of the few backfielders who will be back next year. Mixed emotions when you think of that. Well, you can't keep them forever. I know you'd like to, but you just can't hang on to these boys. And I like to look back at the fond memories that they've given thousands and thousands of... And there goes a the Michigan band. They're marching out of the stadium with a minute 34 to go. But the thousands and thousands of fans who have been treated to their fine exhibition of great football and excellent sportsmanship and 101 other things. First and 10, this play is about to resume. Kern, rolling to the right side, gives it off to Galvis, no place for him to go. He, I might have blown, no, they didn't blow it dead. He was kind of churning there at the 20 and maybe got down to the 17. Campana checks in now, replacing Jankowski. 118, the clock's moving. Ohio State at the Michigan 17. I'm, uh, well, let's see here for a moment. Full house backfield again with the engine tight. 
Rockington, 15. That's as far as he gets. He's pushed way back. It'll bring up a third down, four yards to go. I can't understand why the band hasn't played California, Here I Come. I think <laughs> they're so busy beating Michigan, Bob, they've forgotten about that. 45 seconds and the clock is moving. Usually a defensive ball club at this stage of the ball game would be calling timeout, but it's almost useless to even do that. Dern keeps it himself, tries to get it around the corner, gets to the 13. Where he was hit and brought down there by Keller. That might be the last play of the ball game, my friends. You might have seen the final play at the big stadium in Columbus for 1970. Darn is, Strickland's going in. It's down to 10 seconds. The fans are crowding out on the field. Look out, they'll never get it away. I'm never going to get the play away. There's thousands on the field. It's all over at Ohio State has defeated Michigan 20-9. We'll have to wrap up in a moment. We knew... I have never seen such a mass of humanity on a football field in my life. They couldn't get the final play away because literally thousands and thousands of people ran out onto the field and completely surrounded the Ohio State team. But that California, here I come. That's what the band's playing right now. And uh, they completely engulfed the Ohio State team in a, just the a biggest embrace this country has ever seen. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Michigan team had a difficult time getting away from the crowd to get off the field. And there's still, I'd say, four or 5,000 people on the field right now, knowing full well that they can't do too much harm to it because we hopefully say that they might, there might be some sort of an artificial turf on the stadium next year for the 1971 season. What a ball game. Ohio State beating Michigan 20-9. to nine, And here to tell you how the scoring happened is Earl Flora. Thanks, Bob. Well, it all started in the first quarter, although with not too much of a splash. Uh, Ohio State recovered a fumble on the kickoff. Harry Howard covering the ball on the Michigan 25-yard line. Uh, the, the attempted uh, touchdown drive uh, never got underway, but Fred Schramm con converted a field goal from 28 yards out uh, with just 12-18 left, left on the scoreboard. That made it 3 to nothing in favor of Ohio State. And uh, the first quarter ended that way. However, uh, Betts intercepted a Rex Kern pass at the, at a, in the fading moments of the first quarter. And uh, with this instrument, Michigan tied the ball game up on a field goal by Dana Coyne uh, with less than two minutes gone in the second quarter. The field goal going 31 yards, the score now 3-3. Three to three. Uh, the score remained that way until late in the second quarter. There was one minute and 18 seconds left on the board when Rex Kern hit Bruce Jankowski with a 26-yard touchdown pass. Uh, Bruce catching the ball on the about the five-yard line, just sort of rambling into the end zone. Uh, Schramm's conversion was good. Ohio State once again on top, 10-3, to and that's how the half ended. In the uh, third quarter, Michigan... Uh, Scored a touchdown uh, just about halfway through. It was eight minutes and 30 seconds left. A 50-yard drive altogether, but the touchdown play came from Don Moorhead to Paul Stroba uh, for 13 yards. And one of the heroic plays of this ball game came when Tim Anderson broke through to block the extra point, and it left the score. At the end of the third quarter, Ohio State still ahead 10-9. to The Buckeyes broke it wide open in the fourth quarter for such a tight ball game. Schramm uh, hit another field goal from 27 yards out, 10.50 uh, on the board. The Bucks going ahead 13-9 at this point. And then another uh, a big, big play came when Stan White leaped high in the air, intercepted a Michigan pass on its own 25-yard line, ran it to the 9, and uh, a few plays later, Rex Kern hit Leo Hayden for a four yard, uh, rather it was a pitch out, I'm sorry, a four yard, yard pitch out, Kern to Hayden, uh, touchdown, extra point good, score 20 to nine, there were eight minutes left in the ball game at that point, but no further scoring. And that's how she wound up, Bob, and if I'm stuttering and stammering, so is everyone else in this huge stadium. 20 to nine, Ohio State over Michigan, 
for the world, the planets, the Rose Bowl, uh, and heaven only knows, possibly the national championship before it's all over. Well, Earl, it, it, it was exciting. We'd like to reminisce just for a couple of moments. Uh, Ohio State opening against Texas A&M and winning 56-13, where the Buckeyes get off to that... Uh, 28 to 7 uh, or 21 to nothing lead and then, and then we're ahead 20 uh, 7 to 7 at the half the Duke ball game when the, the Blue Devils took the lead early and for all intents and purposes might have been leading the ball game 17 to nothing because they had a couple of near misses if you'll remember but uh, the Buckeyes finding themselves behind for the first time since that uh, Michigan debacle of a year ago came back to win that one 34 to 10 and then we'll never forget about Michigan State when John Brockington scored early and then Schramm after a fumble recovery and then Schramm kicked a 32-yard field goal and uh, I think Ohio State might, might have been favored by about 35 points in that ball game and they were ahead only not nothing but they came through with a 20-point second half to beat Michigan State and that one 29 to nothing then came the next ball game against Minnesota and in the first 21 minutes of the ball game Ohio State was ahead 28 to nothing to win it 28 to 8 then came my mind one of the outstanding games of the year when the announcement of the firing of Jim Ballack came just a few moments before uh, the ball game actually got underway. Illinois, as we pointed out a couple of times, uh, the football players, I think, could have eaten raw meat long about that stage of the day. They came out, they gave a tremendous performance, uh, aroused, spirited, and they were leading Ohio State many, many times, 20 to 14 at the half, if you remember, 23 to 20. And then the Ohio State Buckeyes came through with that tremendous 34 points in the second half to come back and beat Illinois. Against Northwestern, well, we had Northwestern scoring first to go ahead 7 to nothing. Schramm made it 7-3, and Northwestern went ahead 10 to 3. And then the Buckeyes came back in the second half. Kern went for six, Brockington six, and Kern again for three, and Ohio State had defeated Northwestern 24 to 10 in another come from behind victory. Then there was the Wisconsin ball game. Fred Schramm, who kicked, I think it was six or seven field goals now on the on the year, got us started in the scoring there. They improved their lead to 10 to nothing, and it was only a 10 to seven lead at the half. And then Ohio State came back with a 14 point third quarter, and Wisconsin was knocked off. Then came last week's ball game, and there are all sorts of circumstances in this one. Brockington got uh, the Bucks on the board late in the first quarter. Then Stanley Brown came through with that tremendous 96-yard kickoff return. It was seven to seven till there was just two minutes and four seconds remaining on that clock in that miserably cold, damp, and rainy day and snowy day in Lafayette, Indiana. Fred Schramm became the hero of the year to pull the Buckeyes out from what appeared to be a certain tie and into a victory, and it was 10 to 7, and then that brings us up to today's ball game, which you've so aptly recapped for us. What a year this has been for the Buckeyes. They have not had or did not have, after the first week, their offense in what we would call high gear. They were ridiculed by a lot of people. I'm sure that we even might have been in on a little bit fuel wondering what was happening to Ohio State's offense discarding the fact that they had such a tremendous ball club in all except one ball game against Illinois and they had it then when they needed it it was answered today what was wrong with it not too much as I've told so many people who have asked me what's wrong with Ohio State I said they won eight and they haven't lost any you can't be much better than that and they said, yeah, but what's going to happen against Michigan? Who knew? Nobody knew, really. I don't think even the coaches knew what would happen. Maybe they thought they did. I'm sure Bo Schembechler didn't think his team would lose by 11 points, which they did. But uh, what a season it's been for all of us. And we hope and trust that you've enjoyed our broadcast of it. I think we have one of the finest crews in radio. With you, Earl Flora, certainly we can't have anybody that twists the dials any better than Al Schaff back there and our, uh, the mayor of uh, North Columbus and South Worthington, Dick Benjamin over here. They finally got the goalpost down. That's one of the cheers that went up. They had the crossbars off it. Now they got the big goalpost down. And there's still, I would say what, 10, 15,000 people on the playing field? At least that, Bob. I think Bo Schempler wish he had that kind of a line today. <laughs> <laughs> a 10,000 man line, because I don't think sometimes the way Hayden was running and Brockington running, that uh, I think Ohio State could have penetrated that. But we have, I think, what is the greatest broadcast crew of all the stations up here, and I say that knowing that 
I, uh, I know and love and respect all of our colleagues in this business, but I, I, don't, I wouldn't trade any of them for the fellows that we have up here in the booth. And we hope and trust that we'll be back again next year, because this, I think next year could be an even more exciting year. It's, it's a question mark year. We don't have what I would consider to be a great deal back. We lose so many ball players, eight off the offense, five off the defense. But it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a real exciting year, and I hope and trust that we're all back here in booth 16, uh, broadcasting the Buckeyes in 1971. And I'd like to thank all of you fellows that I mentioned, you, Earl Flora, Harold Schaffer, our engineer, Dick Benjamin, our statistician, and Jim Hufford, who uh, spotted for, uh, for Michigan for us today. A dollar for the topper to all you fellows, and thanks so much for being with us in 1970, and we're looking forward to seeing you again in 1971. Thank you. Well, Bob Wagner, you echo my uh, sentiments uh, exactly. Uh, it's been a great uh, time up here with you this season, and, and thanks for a beautiful and nostalgic flashback through the 1970 Buckeyes, I have only one postscript to add, that being that the vengeance that the Ohio State fans have been after for 50 long, uh, 52 long weeks uh, certainly came true today. Uh, the vengeance uh, was even sweeter because Michigan came in here undefeated and outranking Ohio State in one of the national polls. So uh, the scene was set and the Buckeyes did it. And Bob, once again, thanks again to you. I uh, look forward to seeing you again next year when there's going to be a lot of fun and question marks, but uh, this all adds up to the great game of college football. Well, now this is Earl Flora with Bob Wagner thanking you for being with us during this 1970 football season. We truly hope you've enjoyed being with us as much as we have enjoyed being with you. This is the Nationwide Insurance Football Network. Ohio State football has been brought to you by Nationwide, who reminds you that the man from Nationwide is on your side. Hear all Ohio State football games, plus scores from other major clashes throughout the season on 1220 WGAR. Producing the unique sound.